Members, thanks. <coughs> Members, the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, the 11th of February, 2020. Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed, or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. In addition to our normal live video feed tonight, we are trialling a live video feed on the council meeting of the council meeting to the City of Adelaide Facebook page. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosperous deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all, will all present stand in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air? Thank you, members. Please be seated. Evening members, um, we have one apology tonight and that's from Councillor Donovan. Um, I will look for a confirmation of the minutes from the 28th of January. Thank you, Councillor Abrahamsade and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Canal. Uh, Councillor Abrahamsade? No, members, any uh, changes, comments? If not, back to the move to summer. Thank you, members to the vote. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, we have three deputations tonight. Our first deputation is from Mr. Simon Roger. Uh, Simon wants to speak to us on uh, represent to represent Park 21 West uh, regarding the concept plan and community land management plan as part of tonight's agenda. So I'll ask Mr. Roger to come forward. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Lord Mayor, for the opportunity tonight and councillors to, to listen to me. I've had a look at the agenda and I think it's pretty extensive, so I'll, I'll be less than my five minutes. I represent uh, Alsara, which has been a lessee of um, Park 21 West or you know, Wirra for over 35 years. Um, and the papers that you've got tonight are pretty extensive uh, and I'm not going to repeat anything of them other than just to highlight three key points for this, uh, this project. 
The first one, this is a, an excellent opportunity for um, not just our SARA, but for um, the city of Adelaide. Uh, the parklands, the local community, a myriad of schools that, that we've already got some relationships with, the local residents, and as you know, in that corner of the, uh, the CBD, there's a growing residential population and in surrounding suburbs as well. Um, the need exists and to cater for that demand and to activate that area of the parklands, uh, that's why this project is, is, is happening or we're proposing to have, have happened. Um, in a way that's, that respects the, the heritage as, as mentioned in the introductory comments, as well as the safety of, of a whole myriad of users. The second uh, point is that this proposal is entirely consistent with the, the parklands management strategy, uh, with the community land management plan uh, for example, it's a, this is a genuine community hub that's proposed. It's not a, a single club wanting to build some club rooms or another club wanting to do one little isolated project. So it's a, a community hub for all users, for all South Australians, for all the community as well. Um, there's a growing, as everyone knows now, the growing demand for um, facilities for, for female sport, particularly football. But it's not. It's more than that. There's a um, informal recreation that uh, will be able to be um, benefit from this project. It's been through a lot of community feedback. I think it was about 12 months ago. Uh, the project has listened to that feedback and has been um, amended accordingly. Um, and it also retains and protects the uh, biodiversity objectives um, of, uh, of the region. Uh, the final point, uh, and this is really genuine, we view this as a partnership with council. It's actually been going for you know, a few years already at least. Um, and that does take some time, um, but we think, and we really appreciate the support of uh, the Parklands Authority that this has gone to a couple of times to get their endorsement. Uh, the previous council um, that endorsed the, the draft concept plan and particularly the council administration that we've been working with for a long, long period of time for their guidance as well and support. It's a really good template, I think a really good model of, of partnership um, uh, between users and, and the council itself. It's very transparent and we're happy to be going on the journey and we just uh, hope that you can support and encourage you to support the, uh, the project tonight. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Our second deputation tonight is from um, Ms. Heather Kroll from the Adelaide Fringe, um, plus I think Daniel from Gluttony as well. Um, so this is about the challenges uh, facing the Adelaide Fringe now and in the future. If you'd like to come forward, Heather, Daniel. Welcome. Good You've evening. Got, You've got uh, five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor and councillors, for agreeing to hear us give a, uh, a short uh, deputation this evening about a couple of the challenges that we're facing. As you know, we have um, Fringe about to launch any minute now. So one of the big challenges is just rolling out 2020. But um, this is more about the future. Um, and as the Adelaide Fringe is such a jewel in the crown uh, for the city, um, we I don't need to talk too much about the scale of the Adelaide Fringe and how incredible it is. We're 60 years old this year. Uh, we have over a thousand shows, a few, uh, more than 300 venues. Um, Adelaide audiences pour out and tourists pour out as well. Last year we sold eight hundred thousand tickets we aim to sell a million tickets a year by 2022 so one or two of the challenges that we have in this uh, festival model um, because we are an open access festival we're not top down we're not um, curated from the top we're a bottom-up festival we're a grassroots up festival we are um, open access and so the program is generated by registrations from artists and venues who then come together Together. It's an incredible collaboration, the Adelaide Fringe. It's amazing co-creation that's created by the artists, the venues, the staff of the festival and the venues, the government, the council, um, the show presenters, the producers, the sponsors, and of course the huge audience. And the challenge around being an open access festival is that there's not guaranteed funding for artists to put on their shows. They only earn what they earn from the box office. So they have to make their own budgets make sense based on the ticket sales. And within those budgets, they have to pay for their venues and they have to pay for their accommodation. And so they're the two big challenges that we face as we go forward in this open access festival that uh, it requires uh, contributions from 
venues around the city and beyond uh, and, and North Adelaide as well. So CBD in North Adelaide, it is actually suburban and everywhere, but we're talking tonight about Adelaide City Council region. So we need um, to, every year we open our registrations in July and come July, we would love to be able to have identified a number of new venues that are willing to lean forward and be part of our incredible festival in an, an offer an affordable space for artists to put on their shows. Um, we find that uh, it comes too late around September, August, uh, August, September, people are looking for venues and the work hasn't been done around um, really identifying what are all these empty spaces around the city and is anyone willing to step forward and be become a fringe venue? So that's something we would love the assistance from the council and the administration at the council to identify that between now and July when we, when we open our registrations. The other uh, challenge we have is around accommodation for artists which is extremely expensive and they come from all over the world and spend their dollars here in Adelaide and put on their shows here and they can't afford hotel rate uh, accommodation so again it's about finding people that are willing to collaborate with us. I, uh, Daniel Michaels uh, knows this challenge all too well because he has hundreds and hundreds of artists in his venue in Gluttony and he wanted to talk a little bit about what sort of help we would like to find the spaces that artists could stay in during Fringe. Uh, thanks, councillors. Apologies for the shorts and the t-shirt. I've come straight from an, an event site, so didn't bring a shirt to work. Um, yeah, so the challenges we have um, is, as Heather said, artists and some of our key staff are from interstate or overseas, probably about 300 um, we worked out um, in total that come from elsewhere. Um, and a lot of them are staying in far-flung places like the hills or um, some a bit closer in Nord or Kent Town or just as close as they can get to site. Some in student accommodation, um, some really struggling and so there's people uh, making bedrooms on landings and all, all kinds of things like that. There are some larger festivals in the world that are similar to ours um, that have got to the point where it becomes prohibitive for the artists and for some of these people to participate. And so we wouldn't like to get to that point, I guess. From our perspective, we don't have the resources or the know-how to identify sites where an artist village type situation could occur. If it could be in the city of Adelaide, that would be absolutely fantastic because that's where most of the festival is, let's be honest. And so if they can walk to and from um, the places that they're working in or performing in, uh, it's safer for them and, and better for local businesses and, and so on. So, um, yeah, I guess we, we as a, you know, Gluttony and, and the Fringe, you know, need help from council to identify sites that might be possible and uh, make that happen. So, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, members, the third deputation tonight is from Professor David Ness, and David, uh, sorry, Professor Ness is speaking to us on the Adelaide Football Club unsolicited proposal. Welcome, Dr. Ness. <laughs> Professor Ness. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Lord Mayor and Council. Um, I have a handout here, and I'd appreciate to. Uh, if, um, would you be able to pass that around to councillors? And I think there's enough there for the audience too. I'll just wait till you get a copy. But um, no, actually I'll start. Um, I appear for myself and um, I'm um, a qualified architect and urban planner. Uh, I'm an adjunct professor at uh, UniSA and I was the first certifier in South Australia under the Development Act, um, before your time, some of you. <laughs> um, and in that role, I was responsible for the compliance of all government projects. Now, the Adelaide Football Club proposal does not comply with Council's Guiding Principle 3 on at least three counts. The first one, the footprint on the parklands is not reduced but increased. It does not return 6,000 square metres um, to the parklands as claimed. 
Number two, many trees will be lost in the area of the new oval. So it's unsympathetic, not sympathetic, unsympathetic to the parklands. And thirdly, it is not sustainable due to the total demolition of a basically sound structure generating much waste and requiring lots of new materials and resources. I've written a book about that aspect, but uh, uh, I'll leave that till later. But let's focus on the number one, the footprint and supposed give back to the parklands. As I have shown in my diagram, it is a take away, not give back. The project fails this critical first test. Why? Because the area inside the current fence line is not considered as open space, even though the fence could easily be removed. And you can see at the bottom of the, uh, the diagram, um, part of that area is within the fence line, but it's claimed to be returned to the parklands. Also, the proposed project occupies much of this space with its own big footprint. And you can see that in the cross hatching on the bottom left and the top right. So the Adelaide Football Club's give back 6,000 square metres is highly misleading. I could say more, but I'll just use the word highly misleading and plain wrong to say the least. I have explained more in my two submissions to uh, on your say. So um, I should be very grateful if the council, uh, the Lord Mayor and council members could consider what I've put forward in more detail. My diagram is quite sketchy. Uh, I only did it today. So uh, I hope you'll give that due consideration. I thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. Members. Uh, that takes us to item eight. There are no petitions. Um, item nine, advice from the Adelaide Parklands Authority, uh, 9.1. Is that moving, Councillor? Yes. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Seconding? Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to it? Uh, look, just briefly, uh, Lord Mayor, I know this is uh, for noting, but I want to draw to members' attention that the vote of ACRA uh, is that council needs to understand our uh, principal policy body is warning that we need uh, legal advice, advice uh, that is uh, to investigate whether indeed this, uh, this proposal is consistent uh, with the Parklands Act. Um, it's a very stark warning and given that warning uh, I give advice that I will be moving a motion without notice, requesting that advice, uh, which is a sensible move. It is, it is our principal advisory body. Um, and Lord Mayor, uh, for the benefit of members, uh, I note that these measures that were proposed by uh, APLA included two which uh, were heavily debated, but ultimately rejected by, I think you, Lord Mayor, and the Deputy Lord Mayor, um, there was a recommendation that we consider alternative options and additionally that we withdraw from our um, unsolicited bid process, but uh, they were defeated. In fact, had you voted for them or the Deputy Lord Mayor, they would have succeeded. Um, Councillor Martin, I've just been advised by governance that I should be moving 9.1, um, 9.2 together. Are you happy to also move 9.2? Um, oh, the three parts of the advice. My apologies, I'm misunderstood. So there's three parts of the advice. So the first one, which is the response, the second is the submission to the planning code, and the third part is the Ghana Community Hub, which are the three parts of the advice. Great, thank you. Uh, Councillor Sims. 
Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, just to uh, reiterate Councillor Martin's advice and comments, I think it is very important that we heed the advice of the Adelaide Parklands Authority. We had a, a discussion um, some time ago around the uh, composition of the Parklands Authority. This council decided that it was going to uh, have a merit-based um, appointment process a unique uh, merit-based appointment process when one considers how we appoint members for other um, committees uh, within our control. Um, but nonetheless, we did adopt a merit-based process. Um, and we did so on the basis that these people were experts in their respective fields. And when the experts say to us, we have serious concerns about this project, you need to get other advice, then I think we have to listen very carefully to what they're saying. Clarification, Lord Mayor. Sorry, Councillor Sims, that I think Councillor Sims is verbaling Apple's advice. They did not use at any point the words serious concerns. In fact, I the, the wording was potentially inconsistent. Thank that's a debate. Thank you. That's a that's point a of clarity. Point, not a, Thank you, Councillor uh, Sims. A debating point, Lord Mayor, not a, a point of order. So, um, but in any case, um, I stand by my comment. We should listen to the concerns that have been expressed by the Adelaide Parklands Authority. Take that very seriously. And I look forward to um, Councillor Martin's motion. Thank you, members. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Yes, just to reiterate the uh, merit based appointments. Uh, we're talking to the motion, we're talking to the advice from the Parklands yes. Authority, Councillor. It seems, uh, Lord Mayor, that the only people you interrupt are the independents. No, this so would actually you mind the, the, not doing the, that? I'm sorry, Councillor Moran. We are talking to the advice yes, from the Parklands so Authority. Am I. Therefore, if we have so few councillors now, as this council saw fit to remove the uh, elected body, because others, the more merit based non councillors, would give us frank and fearless Councillor, advice. we are not talking about the merit of the formation of APLA. We are talking, Therefore, we are noting the I'll just, advice I'll just, have to, I'll just have to talk over the top of you, Lord Mayor. Therefore, Councillor we Moran. should give added weight to their uh, advice rather than um, argue about it. The only non-merit-based appointments this council make. Councillor um, Moran, councils. thank you very much. We are talking to the advice from APLA. We are not talking Ergo, about merit-based appointments. If, if you cannot non, speak to the, if the non advice before you, I'll ask you to sit. Are appointed, appointed because of their Thank merit. you, Councillor Moran. If you'd therefore, like to take your seat. No, I don't wish to take my seat. I've Councillor Moran, moment. please take your seat. I then feel Moran. that the advice on this should be taken far more seriously than it used to be when it was just councillors appointed from a faction. Thank you. That statement. Um, members, would anybody else like to speak to the advice of APLA that we are noting? Councillor Canal. Just a couple of words. Um, that's nice and loud. Uh, in the regards, this is for noting, this is advice, it's fantastic, and it forms part of our process. And it's what the conversation that has been amongst most of, uh, of the uh, councillors is that this forms part of a bigger conversation, and we're waiting on the, uh, you know, the, the needs analysis uh, sorry, sorry, the, from, the, from the community, what they're looking for, and this is what this is about. This all fits part of a larger conversation. I see other motions coming up in regards to about uh, uh, going further afield and asking for other opportunities. So this only forms part of the greater conversation, and this this, this fixation that we that a number of councillors have here on this one topic when it forms part of a broader conversation. And I think you'll find most councillors are in agreement that we need to go across all of this. So this forms a part. And your obsession with this is Councillor quite interesting. Councillor we are just actually speaking to whether we are noting the advice from the Adelaide Parklands Authority. Members, would anybody else like to speak to noting the advice of the Parklands Authority? If not, I will go to Councillor Martin to sum up. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I do wish to reiterate that the only way that APLA has to communicate with Council is through the presentation of reports uh, and the points are noted by Council. That is the means by which it communicates. And the point that is made is that this is a body for which we have great respect, not least because each of the appointments are merit-based. 
and the majority of the members have concluded, and I'll reiterate speaking to the point, have concluded that um, uh, the extent of the proposed training facility for the Crows administrative and commercial opponents appears potentially inconsistent with the principles of the Adelaide Parklands Act, particularly that the parklands exist for the public benefit of the people of South Australia and the provisions of the Adelaide Parklands Man Management Strategy that support the use of the parklands for community outdoor recreation, community outdoor recreation and ancillary infrastructure, but not large scale commercial facilities such as the Crows facilities. And they are saying, get some advice. And to that end, um, I commend this to uh, councillors and reiterate that I'll be asking them later on to formally endorse the recommendation of our merit-based Adelaide Parklands Thank Authority. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Uh, Councillor Martin, sorry. There is a so confusing. So <laughs> confusing. Um, members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against, that's carried. Uh, 9.2, which is the advice of uh, the audit committee. Thank you, Councillor Martin. I look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to it? Uh, only again uh, to underscore something that occurred at the audit committee meeting, which I'm sure you'd appreciate my drawing to the attention of members, Lord Mayor, and that is the observation of the committee, and particularly one of the independents that um, the financial reporting process and particularly the documents that are presented to the elected body are sometimes not as clear as they could be. And it is proposed that there be a dashboard or a headline page in order for us to understand key facts, such as uh, we are headed for an operating deficit of close to $20 million, that our debt is spiralling and will be near $80 million by the middle of the year. And I think we can talk to that when that comes up on the agenda a little bit later. Oh, sure. I'm just, Lord Mayor, I'm, I'm illustrating the sorts of information that might be in a dashboard or headline mm -hmm. report. Um, but look, I'm, I'm happy uh, to talk about it later. Thank you. Councillor Canal, did you wish to speak? Members? If not, Councillor Martin, sum up. Sum up, Members, those in favour? Those against, that's carried. So, members, the uh, presiding members report from the 11th of February. So, I do welcome everyone to the year of the metal rat, a year considered to be one of stability and reliability in the Chinese zodiac. As part of the Chinese Lunar New Year celebrations, I was delighted to join the Premier and other civic leaders at the Chinatown Lunar New Year Street Party, where we announced the $4 million upgrade to Moonta Street. So I'd like to thank the Premier and State Government for partnering with Council to deliver this project by agreeing to fund 50%. This transformational project will complement the lighting and mural work, which was launched in late January, and bring it up to an exceptional standard. The Moonta Street streetscape upgrade recognises that Chinatown is one of the city's key tourist attractions and is a vote of confidence in the future of the precinct. Lastly, week I was delighted to join David en uh, Evans from Flow Energy to announce that we have partnered together to contract 100% renewable electricity, a first for a South Australian council. From July this year, all council's electricity use, our traffic and street lights, libraries and community centres, as well as electric car charges in our U parks will be powered by 100% renewable generation. This will eliminate 11,000 tonnes of emissions each year and deliver a 20% reduction in electricity costs to the organisation, freeing up funds to be spent on other services for residents and ratepayers. The long-term contract is also driving investment and jobs in South Australia, with contracted power to come from Clements Gap Wind Farm in the mid-north, as well as new solar farms at Streaky Bay on the Air Peninsula and Canal in the southeast. Um, this as electricity constitutes the single largest supply contract our organisation has, this has been a great process and I really do wish to thank my elected members for their considered support for this project and also I'd like to thank the council executive and the procurement and sustainability teams for their hard work. Overnight, it was announced 
that the City of Adelaide has been recognised by the global think tank, the Intelligent Community Forum, ICF, as one of the top seven intelligent communities and one of the world's top smart cities. These, uh, we join the Sunshine Coast, Hamilton and Markham in Canada, uh, Tallinn and Estonia, Hudson and Westerville in Ohio, USA. The ICF recognises cities that exemplify best practice in broadband deployment and use, workforce development, innovation, digital inclusion and advocacy that offers lessons to regions, cities, towns and villages around the world. The recognition is as much uh, is more about is more than being a, a smart city. It's also looks in addition to our 10 gigabit Adelaide project. Uh, they noted our commitment to sustainability and strong government, business and community collaborations as key to the submission. Finally, I note the departure of Hussam Abiyad from Council, having recently accepted a role in Saudi Arabia. I'd like to personally thank Hussam for his 10 years of dedicated service to the City of Adelaide and particularly acknowledge his efforts and support as my Deputy Lord Mayor last year. I'd now like to ask CEO Mark Goldstone to make a statement in relation to the vacancy for the Central Ward Councillor. Through you, Lord Mayor, as you're aware, Hassan Abiyad has resigned from Council effective 29th of January 2020 in accordance with Section 54.6 of the Local Government Act 1999. I'm required to notify Council of the vacancy in the Office of Central Ward Councillor at this meeting. A supplementary election will be held to fill the vacancy and the administration is working with the Electoral Commission of South Australia to coordinate this process. Thank you. Members, could I have someone move the report be accepted? Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Seconded, Councillor uh, Deputy Lord Nair. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Members, that takes us to item 11.1 .1 on the agenda, which is reports from council members. I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Canole. Members, anyone wish to speak to the report? If not, I'll go back to the mover. Councillor Abraham today. Sum up. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, we go to reports for Council 12.1 Communication in Other Languages, Mandarin. Translation Service Trial Outcomes. I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Ho, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Ho, did you wish to speak? No, Councillor Abraham today? No. Members? If not, I'll go back to the mover. Summed up. Uh, members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, item 12.2 is the 2019-20 uh, quarter two finance report. I will look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Martin, and a seconder. Councillor Knoll, Councillor Martin, would you speak to it? Um, yeah, look, I had a series of questions, Lord Mayor, if I could, um, of the administration. Thank you, Councillor. Okay. Oh, They're settling in for a long night. <laughs> uh, during uh, the audit committee meeting on February 7th, Lord Mayor, you'll recall that the administration advised the committee in open session that it had revised upwards the income targets for aspects of the operations of the aquatic centre, particularly for swimming. Could the administration advise which programs and the amount it revised upwards? See I'm happy to take an estimate. Yeah, three or can you confirm that was in open agenda? Or, or yes, it was in open agenda. Um, I, I believe it was suggested that uh, the Learn to Swim programs particularly had uh, attracted a, a revised budget and there may three, be Three of them. I understand that was in, in confidence as part of the commercial operations report. Uh, I made notes during the meeting. I recorded that during a discussion of the Aquatic Centre and indeed I'll be talking about Aquatic Centre finances which are in the open agenda <coughs> papers tonight. 
given that fact, we will now might take that on notice to be sure we provide you with the right answer. All right. Um, uh, I'm wondering if we can go to the capital report um, and to page uh, 42. That's uh, schedule 16, quarter two capital program report three of four. Um, the last council uh, approved the installation of solar panels on the roof of the aquatic centre to cut expenditure on power and to drive revenue uh, for the aquatic centre. Um, why, unlike uh, every other project that's mentioned in this report under carbon neutral Adelaide, why is the aquatic centre still not connected to the SAPN network? CEO. Through Lord Mayor, Michelle, can you help us? Um, through the Lord Mayor, uh, there is a requirement for any large solar installations to have SAPN um, approval, SA Power Network's approval, and we're still waiting for that. Um, can I ask the administration as a, a supplementary question, how much a year is that uh, likely to produce in income when it's, uh, it's connected? Uh, through, uh, through the Lord Mayor, 97% um, of the electricity generated from that site is actually used by the centre. So it is, it is unlikely to produce anything that is significant. Um, Tens of thousands, if that, or thousands. It, it is a saving yep. um, to our electricity in the order of, I think it's around um, $200,000. Okay, that's great. Thank you. And uh, is it uh, correct to say, and I'm referencing for our finance people, page 18 of the report, um, is it correct to say that there has been a $200,000 turnaround at the Aquatic Centre? That is a favourable increase in financial performance, um, despite those raised revenue targets, which we don't have any information about, despite um, uh, this not having occurred? Um, sorry, through the Lord Mayor, um, the year-to-date number is favourable. Um, we expect that uh, time across the year we'll see it still end up close to budget. Okay, and uh, that budget represents a substantial reduction on the previous year's um, expenditure? I know, I, I believe it was a similar number. Around half a million, 580 I thought. Um, we can let you know. Thank you. Um, well, perhaps you could uh, advise, it, it would not be correct to say that it's going to lose three quarters of a million dollars, would it? So it's... Uh, sorry, uh, through the log, man, the actual details uh, will be uh, be able to be discussed in confidence, but it will be close to the budget number that we have forecast for 1920. Okay, all right. Uh, well, we'll move on if, um, if that's the response. Um, and just uh, finally, at page 32, PO3 notes that $50,000, 58000 in fact, set aside for the Elder Park Master Plan has been returned to savings, and the Master Plan presumably uh, scrapped because it says here superseded by state development in the precinct. What state development is happening in Elder Park? Nothing we know about here. Thanks, Clinton. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, it's just in relation to the Festival Plaza development happening at the moment and um, the Elder Park Master Plan will be reinvigorated once we know um, the outcome of the development. I see. And so the 50,000, 58,000 is being returned um, or carried forward or returned to savings? 
Uh, through the Lord Mayor, return savings. I see. And uh, um, just one final thing. Our borrowings will now um, exceed, we know all that we're allowed to borrow uh, in three months plus. Um, what will the process be um, for borrowing more money, uh, provided we don't start selling the furniture or assets and things? Yeah, three or more. Look, we're very aware of the um, <clears throat> prudential borrowing limits um, are forecast to be exceeded in the second half of the um, 21 financial year. So the primary reason is, is due to the timing of our commitments that Council will be aware of. Administration has been working on a debt reduction strategy and we're looking to bring that to you in the near future. Um, in my view, the, the prudential limit that's imposed is a conservative figure and was set by a previous council prior to consideration of some of the city shaping projects that we're now engaged in. Um, and our prudential limits and our debt forecast will be fully debated as part of the coming budget process. It's going to be a key aspect of what we talk about. Um, and uh, you know, there's no doubt that there's a range of levers that council has uh, regarding uh, revenue and expenditure that we need to fully consider as part of the budget. And can I just clarify, you said second half of 21 that we would exceed our prudential limits. You meant first half of the 2021 financial year, that is in about four months. That's when that year starts. Tracy, could you? Uh, sorry, through the Lord Mayor, it's the second half of 21. So it's from January 21. From that period onwards. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Councillor Connolly, did you wish to speak to the report? Members, are there any other questions or comments? Just a comment, Sims? Lord Mayor. Look, I, I'm interested in the advice that administration just gave. And I think, uh, Lord Mayor, that this really underscores the need for us to start to have a genuine conversation with ratepayers about rates in the City of Adelaide and to stop this ongoing obsession with freezing rates, the Harvey Norman style economics approach that this council adopts, where you know we put everything on the credit card. Let's actually start to have a discussion with our ratepayers about the revenue base, and um, I hope we will do that during the budget process. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Members, Councillor Moran. Um, I completely disagree with Councillor Sims. Um, this council now has always prided itself on not uh, raping and pillaging the purses of our ratepayers. And indeed, um, I would like us to become the Monte Carlo Council of Australia, where we're totally rate free and we run our businesses so well, and we have good businesses, but they're not paying their way. And selling off the parklands to private Victorian firms is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about running our car parks, getting perhaps more car parks, sorry Rob. Um, and, uh, and really, and, uh, hence no team. Um, we need to take the pressure off our ratepayers and, um, and try to reduce the rates. In fact, during the budget, I will be um, encouraging the council to reduce its rate in the dollar rather than just freeze it. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Members? Um, I would also, uh, just as a comment, um, noting that the prudential limit uh, is going to, uh, we're going to exceed the prudential limit at the end of 2021 financial year. I think it's also important that we look at the 10 year, it is a long term financial plan, and if we look at the 10 year horizon, um, uh, aware of um, both the budgeting process and our long-term financial plan that we've actually got to go through in the next few months and the debt reduction strategy that we'll be uh, discussing at a later date as to how we can actually uh, bring back that short-term pain. Um, members, if there's no further comment, I'll put it to the vote. Those in favour? Oh, sorry, Councillor Martin, to sum up. My apologies, yeah, um, Councillor. Look, I share um, your concern, Lord Mayor, and I, I do hope that we don't sell too many assets in order to pay our debt. But may I, I just say that I too thoroughly disagree with uh, Councillor Sims. Um, this council has an obligation uh, to manage its affairs in such a way that there's a, a, no unnecessary impost on ratepayers. It's just like a household budget. Um, we just have to manage it. I'd love to go to Italy next month, 
but I need to do some stuff around the house, so I'm not going to Italy. Just the same as we don't need to go out and Put it on the buy card. shopping. Set. No, 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 it's maxed out. Thank um, you, Councillor. So I, I, I disagree profoundly with that. I think our ratepayers have an expectation that we will manage our finances in such a way that we won't get into financial strife. Thank you. Um, members to the vote, those in favour? <coughs> those against, that is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to 12.3, which is neglected and or derelict properties. I look for a mover. Councillor Moran and a seconder. Councillor Kouros. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Uh, no, I recommend this one. Um, Councillor Kouros, did you wish to speak? Councillor Simmons. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, just to uh, highlight um, for members of the gallery and the, the broader community that uh, may be tuning in, um, there was a, I asked a question about this at committee um, last week where I asked about the impact on people that may not have the financial uh, capacity to um, pay for um, necessary improvements to their property. Um, and I understand council administration has given an undertaking that in approaching this, uh, they will not adopt a punitive approach. Um, and if uh, people are in a situation where, uh, because of their financial circumstances, they are unable to uh, make changes to neglected or derelict properties, then they will not be compelled or forced or punished um, for not doing so. So uh, on that basis, I'm happy to support this. Uh, members, no, I'll go back to the mover to sum up. Okay. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. 12.4 is the encroachment policies balconies. I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. A seconder. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Kouros, did you wish to speak to it? <laughs> Councillor Martin. Right. Members, if not, back to the mover to sum up. Members, those in favour, those against, that is carried. 12.5, North Terrace Public Realm. I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Knoll. Members, not back to the move to sum up. Thank you, members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against, that is carried. 12.6, the Golden Wattle Park Concept Plan and Community Land Management Plan. Members, I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today, and a seconder. Councillor Canole. Councillor Abraham today, do you wish to speak to it? Is that Councillor Canole. Uh, members, Councillor Martin. Just a quick question of the administration. Um, could they please advise if the car park which is on, on the plan um, for 112 spaces of page 105, number four. Uh, will that be open uh, during the day um, for commuter parking and other parking? CEO. Thanks, Christy. Could you Through the chair, uh, no. Oh, well, that's nice and brief. <laughs> it's quite a debut, isn't it? Um, uh, look, Lord Mayor, may, may I speak to it um, at this point? You may speak. Okay, look, um, I, I want to acknowledge that the administration has done an excellent job in not only uh, seeing this through the process that began in the last council, um, but also in negotiating the way that it's turned out as a consequence of the public consultation. And I stress that I have no problem with uh, ALSARA, what it's proposing, or its sub -lessees. But I am concerned that this plan does uh, create a precedent, which I've shared with the administration, that that car park, which is actually a drop-off point as well, and um, uh, winds through the parklands, albeit at a slither of parklands, uh, does create a precedent. It does create a precedent for bus drop-off zones and the like in the middle of parklands. Now, I, I know that parking is being reduced and that's great. I will vote for this, but I think it's, it's disappointing that we are going down that path. And just finally, in respect of the community land management plan, which is part of this proposal, um, I am disappointed that uh, we have not at uh, pages 117 and 123 
um, made a statement about our attitude to the Royal Adelaide show parking. I think this would have been the opportunity for us in a community land management plan to say, it is our desire to see the end of Adelaide show parking on the parklands, rather than as we have done, we will work uh, to reduce the impacts of that parking. Um, some council has to take a stand at some time and say, this is not good for parklands. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members, any other comments? If not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Thank you. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. 12.7, sanitising streets to alleviate asthma. I look for a mover. Deputy Lord Mayor and a seconder. Councillor Abraham today. Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Abraham. Members? Not oh, back to the mover. Thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. 12.8, Planning and Design Code Heritage. I look for a mover. Councillor Martin, thank you. And a seconder. Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Councillor Abraham. Members? If not, I'll go back to the mover. Councillor Martin? Summed Members, to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. 12.9 is the Creative Industries Discussion Paper Submission. I'll ask for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Martin. And a seconder? I'm moving an alternative motion. Thank um, you, Councillor Martin. Look, I, I'd um, like to move that the matter be deferred to committee. If I could actually just clarify what the submission date for the, um, the through the presiding member, twenty eighth of February is the closing date. Okay, so uh, if the submission is the twenty eighth, it won't have time to come back into council. Oh darn! Um, um, what was the uh, what was the? Well, the I, I had hoped that. Um, we could discuss it. It is a discussion paper and at the risk of going over old ground about committee, I did read at the weekend, Lord Mayor, that you've done a backflip and we're now able to discuss discussion papers at thank, committee. Thank you, Councillor Martin. I didn't do a backflip. We were always able to discuss and we have got advice to that fact. If you'd like to actually discuss the paper that is before you in the chamber, I would love to hear your discussion. Okay. All right. Well, look, my... my um, so hang on, what am I doing? If I, if I cannot move because of the time frame. So I, when the I would, look, if, would you like to move it or would you like to not move it? Oh, um, <laughs> look, I just feel uneasy about moving a discussion paper. Well, you, can move, you actually have moved that it. it's deferred to committee, so I'll look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Would you like to speak to your deferral? Uh, no, I can't. You can speak to your deferral, it's just that the submission is due in before. Yes, but Lord Mayor, that there would be no point. That would be kind So you're withdrawing your amendment? I thought you told me you were telling me it was withdrawn because of the deadline for this. So what were these guys approving? The motion as printed or the deferral? I am looking for a mover for the motion as printed. And what happened then? It was moved as printed? No, I went back to you to say, are you still moving your amendment? Oh, I see. Because so you, you did actually, it's already on the screen before we took advice as to what the submission date was. So okay, well, look, Lord Mayor, I withdraw that. Thank you, Councillor uh, Martin. And do the standing orders now prevent me uh, from sitting down and speaking again? Uh, I actually need someone to move the motion as before you. Okay, but if I resume my seat, as I understand recent interpretation of the standing orders, I will not be able to speak. If I can clarify for you, Councillor Martin, the motion that you've moved and now withdrawn with the consent of the meeting, therefore there is nothing before the meeting. When somebody moves a new motion, you will have your opportunity to speak to that motion. Well, it's contrary to the advice that we've had previously, and in fact, I've been working with the administration to change that. The advice. So, can, uh, sorry, Councillor Martin. 
I will just clarify. Them. If I can clarify for you, Councillor Martin, that was a different situation. There was a motion in play before the meeting. At this point, there is no motion before the meeting for discussion. It's complicated. Okay, I'll take my seat and I'll speak when I can. Thank you. Um, can I ask a question of clarification? Up to um, the other one that was refused was when a motion was put up and wasn't seconded. So I don't see the difference. There wasn't a motion in play. That motion wasn't seconded. But because I'd moved the motion, you said I'd spoken. I argued that I didn't get a seconder. So it wasn't in action. And you said, yes, it was. So I don't see any difference to this at all. I think we really need to clarify these things. Thank they are you. important. I'll ask for clarification, Councillor Moran. Thank you. I'll attempt to clarify for you, clarify that for you, Councillor Moran. The previous debate in a different meeting, there was a motion before the chair. An amendment was moved by yourself, which lapsed for want of a seconder. Therefore, in doing so, you had spoken to the motion. Different scenario to this scenario because there is currently no motion before the meeting because Councillor Martin has withdrawn his motion to defer. So the debate starts again with a new motion. So I had Councillor Abraham today moving the motion. Councillor Sims, did you wish to second? And Deputy Lord Mayor, sorry. Happy to defer to you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Oh, thank you, Councillor. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Abraham today, would you to speak to it? Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Sims, would you wish to speak to it? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I um, I would have uh, supported um, the motion uh, that Councillor uh, Martin uh, foreshadowed, uh, but has since withdrawn, because I do agree that it's appropriate for us to have discussion around um, discussion papers. And I, um, I apologise uh, to administration that that hasn't um, been possible because of the new uh, meeting structure. We didn't have that occur um, at the committee last week. Um, and uh, But to give some general feedback, I, I agree with a lot of the issues that have been fleshed out here. Um, I think when we're approaching discussion papers in the future, <laughs> it would be good to look at what mechanism there is to facilitate um, more informal discussion with elected members. Um, if that can't happen through the sort of static Q&A that is now committee, um, if there is another mechanism to uh, do that, I think that would be really helpful so that we can um, really give this uh, sort of project the time that it deserves. Members, Councillor Martin. Um, I'm not sure who I'm uh, discussing the discussion paper with Lord Mayor, but I am discussing it, so that's an advance from the previous week. Um, and just for the record, um, can committee discuss dis discussion papers? Yes, committee can discuss discussion papers. All Contents right. of reports can be discussed okay. and questions might be asked. We, as you are all aware, we are not to move recommendations or debate whether we are in favour or not of the recommendation but the reports can be fully discussed. So I can say to you, look, this paper isn't good and probably, you know, I think it's a bad paper or that's okay, but I can't say I'm going to vote against it because it's a bad paper. So Councillor Martin, we are now talking to the paper before us. Are you discussing the paper before? No, no, no. I'm or are we discussing you. committee structure now? No, I'm following up on what you were telling me. I'm asking a question. However, if uh, the Lord Mayor wishes to um, close that conversation down, I'm happy to shut it down. Um, look, uh, this is not the forum for discussing discussion papers. Uh, there are, as you're aware, uh, strict time limits. Uh, that mean there can be no real discussion, no questions and answers. Um, I regret the opportunity to not talk about this because there is a very large discussion to have around in that creative industries area, the role that our community centres and our libraries play within this community. They are, for most people, the first contact point for creative industries. And our community centres also hold um, creative um, uh, uh, instruction in a whole range of things. Uh, they also, as the Lord Mayor would be aware, are part of the, uh, the exhibition um, uh, of uh, art, sculpture, and so on, that, that uh, exhibitions that occur in this city. Uh, and therefore, it would have been good to have seen within this paper a narrative around 
how that might continue in the future, but more particularly how it might be expanded. And I am aware that there are parts of the city where there is no opportunity for engagement through community centres in arts, visual arts or whatever. Um, it, it is my view that this city, in terms of infrastructure, does need to begin to think about establishing a community centre, perhaps in the central ward. Um, certainly, there is a scope to establish one uh, within the CBD precinct. Uh, and I think there needs to be a discussion about the community centres in the, uh, the south and about council acquiring property in the way that it did uh, in North Adelaide. Um, sadly, given that um, there was no discussion of the discussion paper possible at the last meeting, um, it's something we can't discuss. But I, I would recommend to administration that there be a discussion and consideration of that. And just finally, in respect of um, the uh, simple one line reference on page 154 to a concert hall in terms of infrastructure, it is, in my view, a, um, a fairly, um, um, I, I'm not sure how to say it uh, so that it's, it doesn't sound offensive, but I think it's a pretty limp action on the part of a city council to say we should have a concert hall and yet make no recommendation about the way in which that might be created. And it is possible that this city could play a substantial part in the creation of a concert hall at one of its venues. Uh, and we have uh, an enormous number of property assets that would be well suited to a concert hall, provided they're not disposed of uh, during the fire sale of assets to improve our bottom line. But there are a number of assets in the city um, that would be able to host a concert hall. And so it is somewhat disappointing to see simply the observation, we need a concert hall. And the Bell Lord Mayor uh, marks the point that I was about to make um, this is not the forum for discussing discussion papers. Um, committee should have been, and it was a great pity we didn't. The discussion paper, <laughs> just uh, to that end, was the discussion paper put forward by Minister Pisoni and the Department of Innovation and Skills, as opposed to the submission, which is not a discussion paper. It is a response to the discussion paper. I understand uh, members, that. I members, if, are there any other comments? It's, it's great. It's a bit like who's on first, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> What's on second? Um, uh, members, is there any other discussion on the uh, submission to the discussion paper? Deputy first? Lord Mayor. I'd just like to thank Councillor Martin for that thoughtful contribution. It's unfortunate it took 10 minutes to get to that point. Um, uh, but I would, I would, I'm curious, was there an amendment in, in that or not? There were certainly thoughts. No, there wasn't. There was comments to the submission. So presumably we're happy with the submission to the discussion later. It was feedback, yeah. Okay, understood. Thank you. Councillor Coros, did you wish to speak? No. Thank you. Um, any other further comments, members? If not, I'll go back to the mover, Councillor Abrahams. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Can I thank administration for their wonderful work and also remind all members that an open, transparent forum like the council meeting, like this chamber here tonight, would be the perfect way to, to talk and discuss. Um, uh, I endorse this, uh, uh, this, this, this submission to, uh, to the members uh, and ask for, um, for the support. Thank you. Any members to the vote? Those in favour? Those against? That's carried. 12.10 is the pre-transition development plan amendment and I will look for a mover. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to her? Councillor Knoll, members? I'll back to the, oh, sorry, Councillor Abrahams. Just, just a quick question. Um, Lord Mayor, a quick question off administration. Do we need to uh, change any parts that refer to July 2020 now that we've had a change? See you. Through you, Lord Mayor. I understand that that is not the case. We do not need to change anything. It's just been a delay, but I'll make it shanty to clarify. Uh, through the Lord Mayor, um, that was an announcement that was made by uh, Minister Canol last week. Um, however, um, the recommendation still stands because it's post that date. Thank you. Uh, 
much, Andy. Uh, members, if there's no further questions, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Members to the right, those in favour, those against, that is carried. 12.11 is the Planning and Design Code Public Realm Policies. Thank you, Councillor Abrahamsaday, and a second to Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Abrahamsaday, did you wish to speak to Deputy Lord Mayor. Members? I'll go back to the move to sum up. Uh, members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. 12.12 .12 is the Planning and Design Code Draft Submission. I look for a mover. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder, Councillor Abraham today. Members, or oh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Abraham today. So, um, sorry, Councillor Abraham today. Did you wish to comment? Okay. Um, Shanti, did you wish to speak to this? Um, through the Lord Mayor um, and referencing uh, Councillor Ibrahim today's uh, comment earlier about uh, July 2020, um, we do recommend uh, an amendment to um, this motion, um, which is a change to item number three, um, to, add, um, to add some items uh, into that recommendation in light of the delays post July um, 2020. We're, we're advised by the department that um, the phase three um, councils will probably most likely come into effect sometime in September. However, um, that has not been uh, confirmed. Um, we're suggesting that with um, with that additional time that's been um, been made available for the planning reform, um, that um, the minister and SCAP be advised uh, to allow a full and comprehensive testing uh, regime for the code. Um, so there's um, five uh, five additional items under three under item three. So testing um, to allow further consultation on the code once. Um, uh, input has been received on it um, and not to wait till after the code has actually uh, been made um, effective. Um, recommending that all ratepayers uh, throughout the state uh, are informed uh, of the changes uh, to the code that impact on property. Um, the other thing that we've noted too is there's a new planning solution that's being proposed through this reform um, to allow a full and proper testing of that platform uh, prior to it uh, being made uh, made live in September, assuming that September is the date, um, and to allow um, enough time for implementation to take place. So uh, there are additional items that we are recommending that Council consider, um, given the announcement late last week of the changes to the implementation date for the code. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, I'll just ask if you're happy to incorporate. Uh, yes. Yes, thank you. And yes. Councillor Williams, I second it. Thank you. Um, Councillor Sims, did you have a. Oh, no, I'm just offering to move the amendment. Oh, thank you. Um, so, members, are there any questions particularly about the amendment? If not, I will go back to the move to sum up. Deputy sum Lord Mayor. Up. Thank you, members. Uh, to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Members, that takes us to item 13 on our agenda tonight, and we have question 13.1, a question on notice by the Deputy Lord Mayor maintaining our public realm. I'll take that as read. Thank you. Item 13.2, Councillor Martin, question on notice. Former Councillor Abian. Uh, yes, thank you, um, Lord Mayor. The question is, could the administration advise when it or the Lord Mayor, Deputy Lord Mayor, be first became aware formally or informally that the former councillor Hassam Abiyad had accepted employment in Saudi Arabia? The date on which the council register of interest was updated to reflect these new employment arrangements. And finally, if any member of the administration sought legal advice about councillor Abiyad's appointment in Saudi Arabia 
and the nature of that advice. Would you like me to read the response? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Abiyad formally resigned as a councillor on the 29th of January 2020, effective immediately. The administration had not been advised of the nature of Councillor Abiyad's private business interests in Saudi Arabia. A council member must update the register of interest within one month of a notifiable change, section 67.1 of the Local Government Act 1999 SA, the Act. This section does not extend to former council members. No legal advice was obtained by administration on the nature of Mr Abiyad's private business interests in Saudi Arabia. Members, that takes us to question 13.3. Uh, Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, and I am going to ask this because there will be follow-up questions. Um, on December 11th, 2018, during debate of a motion to release the golf course master plan, which was debated um, by the majority faction of council, the administration suggested, sorry, which was defeated by the majority of, uh, faction of council. That's quite different from debated. Defeated by the majority faction of council, the administration suggested that the master plan would be revealed in March 2019. At the opening of state parliament on February 5th, 2020, the Marshall government foreshadowed a priority was to construct an entertainment hub at either the rail yards adjacent to the new, new health precinct or among competing proposals on the southern end of the Adelaide Golf Course. Could the administration advise, one, have the, there been discussions, formal or informal, between the Lord Mayor or any member of the administration with the state government or any other party, including representatives of Adelaide Venue Management Corporation, about any part of the parklands constituting the golf course or around the golf course being developed for an entertainment hub or stadium? Two, if so, what has been the nature of those discussions? Three, is the one year delay in the re release of the golf course master plan related to the possibility of the development of that part of the parklands? Four, have there been discussions, formal or informal, between the Lord Mayor or any member of the administration with the state government or any other part of the parklands on or around the rail yards mentioned above being developed or an entertainment hub or stadium? Um, five, if so, what has been the nature of those discussions? Six, if there have been any discussions, as in two and five, when will the, uh, when will the elected body be fully briefed? Would you like me to read the reply, Councillor Martin? Uh, yes, if you like, Lord Mayor. Yes. Um, no discussions have occurred between the Lord Mayor and the State Government or any other party, including representatives of the Adelaide Venue Management Corporation, about any part of the parklands constituting the golf course or around the golf course being developed for an entertainment hub or stadium. The timing of the release of the draft golf course master plan, which has not yet been endorsed by Council, is not related in any way to the possibility of development on that part of the parklands. The administration are reviewing the draft master plan in light of the projected costs, benefits and current golfing trends and will present back to Council once reviewed. No discussions have occurred between the Lord Mayor and the State Government or any other party, including representatives of the AVMC, about any part of the parklands on or around the rail yards mentioned above being developed as an or an entertainment hub or stadium. In September 2018, the CEO, the then Director Services and Director Growth were invited to meet with an, a consultant engaged by the AVMC regarding consideration for a future city stadium. Commentary was high level and broad in nature and related to types of users and stadia infrastructure in other jurisdictions. Following media activity last year detailing the potential for an inner city stadium on or around the rail yards, the CEO met with the CEO of the AVMC to seek clarity regarding the concept. The conversation was of a high level nature and the CEO requested that if and when such a concept was progressed, the CEO of the AVMC would provide a briefing for council members. The CEO was then asked by the AVMC to participate in a peer review of the inner city stadium <coughs> concept at the rail yards. Given the fact that no details were provided of the proposal, comments made by the CEO were limited to the potential impacts and limitations of the park, on the parkland site. As a result of recent media activity regarding potential city stadium options has now occurred, the CEO will formally seek a briefing for council members from the CEO of the AVMC and the CEO of the Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Authority.
Members, that takes us to item 14, questions without notice. Um, sorry, Councillor Martin, and I'll go to Councillor Sims. Um, Lord uh, Mayor, while it's all fresh in everybody's mind, uh, I would like to ask a follow-up question. Um, and I, I do ask the administration to correct me if I've misunderstood that response. But it is apparent that from September 2018, um, the administration, either the CEO or the then Director of Services and Growth uh, or the CEO, have been negotiating or discussing, shall I say, with the AVMC, the use of uh, parklands currently constituting the rail yards for a stadium, and that in more recent times, there is a proposal for a, uh, an involvement by the uh, Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Authority. Could the CEO <laughs> advise us what is the site that the Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Authority um, is likely to identify as a potential site for such a stadium? And what is the difference between the AVMC proposal and the Adelaide Stadium Management? Uh, uh, Oval Stadium Management Authority um, a proposal. CEO. Through Lord Mayor, I have no insight into the Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Authority proposal. I've only seen what you have in the media. Um, and so that's what I'm suggesting in my response that I will approach the CEO of the Stadium Management Authority to come and brief council on what it is they're proposing. There's been no other conversations that I've been part of. CEO, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, my question is for the uh, CEO. Will he publicly release any legal advice obtained on the new meeting structure? CEO. Three, Lord Mayor. Ordinarily, we don't release um, legal advice. Um, we look and seek to retain our legal privilege. However, if council resolves to direct me to release that information, I'm happy to do so. Thank you. Thank you Sorry, Councillor Moran and then Councillor Martin. Sorry, that just jogged my, my memory. Were there two sets of legal advice? Because the um, chair of the committee said at the time in the meeting that he had was had had legal advice, and this is when we questioned during the meeting why we weren't allowed to discuss things. Um, the chairman said that he'd got legal advice, and this is how to do it. Now we have the Lord Mayor saying she's had, well, the administration saying they've had legal advice, and it seems to come back. Is this an interpretation of the same legal advice, or did we go and get more legal advice? See Rudy, can you help us? Thanks. Through the Lord Mayor, I believe what the DLM at that point was referring to was actually governance advice. That is my understanding, not uh, external legal advice. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin? Um, look, just further to that question, Lord Mayor, um, you observed earlier on that uh, contrary to media reports, there had been no backflip. That discussion has always been possible at committee Yet the chair of committee, Dep the deputy Lord Mayor, specifically instructed us at committee that there would be no discussion. On what basis are you now proposing that there is discussion? Is that because you've changed your mind or the administration has changed its mind or advice to the contrary has been presented? It's an honest question. I, so I actually might talk about the legal advice that we saw, see you. Through you, Lord Mayor. As a result of the uncertainty that council members experienced, the, um, the governance team, I asked to obtain some external legal advice so we could provide clarity to council members. That clarity confirmed what the intent of those meetings was, um, and that is what is being proposed. Answer your question, Councillor. Yes, I'm satisfied with that, Lord Mayor. May I ask another one, or would you like to give an opportunity to other members? I'll see if other members would like to ask any other questions. If not, um, uh, could the I've circulated this uh, previously in the hope the administration can provide, provide the advice. Um, could the administration provide an update on the progress of tree removal and other works on the eastern and western sides of Prospect Road at Parks Three and Two? 
uh, respectively, including any changes to the number and identity of trees to be removed, the number of trees and quantity of native vegetation already removed, and the next steps of the project. Three, CEO. Three, Lord Mayor. That information or that request um, was received late this afternoon, and thank you for that. Um, we haven't had a chance to pull that information together. I will circulate that to you as soon as it's made available. Thank you. And I have one other question, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, it relates to the Central Market Arcade redevelopment. Um, Lord Mayor, at the most recent council meeting on January 28th, you confirmed that the total value of all City of Adelaide contributions to the Central Market Arcade redevelopment was not as publicly announced in December last year. Um, you in fact told the community for, for, for the first time that the project also included a contingency fund of $1.4 million bringing the total value of the City of Adelaide contributions to just over $29 million. Um, now, Lord Mayor, the CEO has released from confidentiality a series of documents, including the Council Commission Prudential Report into the project and the Project Delivery Agreement Summary prepared by Carl Clark Lawyers. The Prudential Report says, and I quote, the model assumes a gross City of Adelaide contribution of $54.87 million, plus a contingency of $1.4 million for the project, uh, known as the Returnable Works. The Carl Clark Lawyers letter assumes slightly less the cost of the City of Adelaide, $54.73 million, plus contingency. And each figure is made up of a cash amount and a $27 million payment to the City of Adelaide from the developer for the value that they placed uh, on the rate payment asset of air rights above the Central Market Arcade. Could the Lord Mayor advise us why? Why, in the interests of transparency, did she not disclose that information at the time of the announcement? Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, I, in fact, said our contractual commitment is $27.4 million. I also said that in addition to that, Council voted for a contingency of $1.3 million, which is correct. So, so I am talking about our contractual commitment in terms of cash is 27.4, and the additional and separate amount that is contingency 1.39. I will actually ask um, Tom McCready because the other is in air rights. Through you, Lord Mayor, just to clarify the 51.4 million the councillor has actually indicated. First of all, you have to understand the principle of air rights. So effectively, the centre or the, our returnable works, what council gets back, is a cost of 54 million. That is a construction cost, a build cost. What we've been able to negotiate through the contractual arrangement is air rights. Basically, what we have done is we sold air space or oxygen up above the centre. That is to the tune of 27 million, and we've had that extensively valued. So what that means is you're getting the center effectively 27 million off the cost of the, the construction costs. The <coughs> end valued council as an asset when it's returned back to us is 72 million of an asset value. So for the 27 point, uh, all the figures that you're saying, plus the contingency, you're ending up with a 72 million dollar asset value. When we done our previous work, which has been presented to council on numerous occasions, we indicated the cost to council could be in the region of between 31 million up to 39 million, and we also presented a cost of 40 million to council in various workshops. So it actually, we've negotiated a very good deal based on the error rights. Um, Lord Mayor, look, I have uh, no doubt that this is a very good deal. My question is, given that the contractual agreement and the prudential report says clearly the model assumes a gross City of Adelaide contribution of $54.87 million plus contingency. Why did we not acknowledge that the cost of this development is more than double what was publicly announced? Mr. Pretty. Through you, Lord Mayor, just again to indicate, we have indicated the cost to council and to the ratepayers, the construction costs are not what council will be paying for this actual asset. And as listed by the Lord Mayor within the Prudential Report as well, and various reports, the cost to council is not that. So it's 54 minus the 27. That's the cost to the ratepayers. We've been able to establish a value of error rights up above, which actually has come off the cost of the building. So we've actually uh, deliberately talked to, this is the construction cost, this is what council are paying, and here is the end asset value that you end up with. 
Uh, look, I understand the answer I'm getting, but it doesn't match the question. And the question is, why did we not, for the sake of transparency, tell the ratepayer that the cost was more than double what was announced? Thank you, Mr. Green. Through you, presiding member, again, I will just emphasise this. The cost to the community is $27 million. The cost to construct is $54 million. When Council entered into this arrangement in regards to the EUI process, it talked to our rights, extracting value of up above the centre. The valuation of that our rights, what the proponent is developing, is $27 million in extracted value. That comes off the cost. So if you want to talk to the total cost of the construction, it's $54 million. But the cost to the community is as listed, and the $54 million was contained within the reports as well. Well, Lord Mayor, I, I just see 27 million out of 54, 54 paid, but um, clearly that's not the way the world really works. Uh, may I ask a second question? And that is the Prudential report for the project also advises that uh, for that ratepayer contribution of almost $58 million, almost double what was announced, there will be no income after costs to the City of Adelaide until at the earliest financial year 2038-39. Um, why was that information not disclosed at the time it was announced that the development would bring income to the council's bottom line? Why was it not announced that there will be no income for almost a generation? Thanks. Through you, Lord Mayor. The, the Prudential Issues report looks at all borrowings and all debts and revenues coming in. Um, it was shown the Prudential Issues report is actually a public report which was released. Um, and what the, the Prudential, the expert in regards to that, which is BRM Holdings, have done is they've amortised it out over the longest period. However, what they've took is a very conservative approach in regards to that. Um, the, the revenues that we've predicted in regards to lease values are indeed correct, but what they've also took into account is expenditure and repaying debt in regards to the $27 million. Yes, CEO, did you through you, Lord Mayor. Councillor Martin, we have dealt with these matters in detail through council meetings. I'm happy if you request for a special not a special meeting, a committee meeting where we can go through once again to clarify with you because you seem to be uncertain about the arrangements. No, if, that's no. a, if that's a request of council, happy to provide it to you because we seem to be asking and going through the same question. No, no, not at all, uh, uh, CEO. Sorry, I'm promoting you. Not at all, CEO. This is information that was not disclosed and I'm asking why it wasn't disclosed. But look, I'm happy to have a meeting, uh, a committee, so long as there can be discussion. If there's no discussion, then there's no point. Members, are there any other questions without notice? If not, we will go to item 15 on the agenda, which is motions on notice. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I move the motion standing in my name and seek a seconder. Sorry, thank you, Councillor Moran. Thanks, Lord Mayor. We've heard uh, tonight from Heather Kroll, the CEO of uh, the Adelaide Fringe, and Daniel Michael from Gluttony about some of the challenges that are faced um, by uh, our Fringe Festival and in particular the artists who come here to Adelaide during this uh, premiere um, event period. Um, and we've heard from them that two of the key challenges are around the affordability of accommodation um, and also um, the availability of venues for uh, Fringe um, artists to perform in. And so this motion is addressing both of those issues that have been raised with me by people in the arts community and in particular um, by Fringe. What I'm seeking to do here, Lord Mayor, is um, get council administration to work with the Fringe to look at whether there are potential sites of vacant land or property that could be used for the purpose of a artist village um, for the Fringe period in 2021. Um, the artist village model is something that has been used overseas in places like Edinburgh. You would know about this better than myself, um, Lord Mayor, given your background in that area. Um, but uh, this is a model that has been used overseas. And um, what I'm suggesting is that administration play a role in trying to identify whether vacant land could be used. 
there is a lot of vacant land in our city um, at the moment, Lord Mayor, regrettably. I'm not talking about parklands. My motion makes it clear that that is not um, for consideration. But this could potentially be a really exciting opportunity to activate a plot of land that is sitting there idle. It could be a boost for local businesses. It could be an opportunity to showcase things like tiny houses, prefabricated houses, sustainable living. Um, so it could be a really exciting opportunity. In terms of the second part of the motion, looking at uh, potential fringe venues, again, it makes sense that we do what we can to try and encourage landowners to use their vacant land and to make the most of them. Um, and I know some councillors will say, oh, this is a potential cost to council, um, but the Fringe Festival brings a huge economic benefit to our state and in particular to our city. And uh, so I think this is some work that would really pay for itself, um, Lord Mayor. So all I'm proposing is we get a report done and uh, come back to council in uh, June 2020. The Fringe Festival is about to kick off this Friday and what better way for this council to show its support um, than to respond to the issues that have been raised by key people in the sector. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? I reserve my one, Lord Mayor. Members? Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I commend the spirit um, that this motion has brought to us in. Uh, but I do have concerns. Um, this is a potential cost to council, um, uh, but it's one that I think is outside of our remit. Um, and while I'm happy with uh, sections two um, and three, um, I think it's well within our ability to consider vacant properties and recommend them for usage as uh, uh, as potential fringe venues. I am I am concerned about the establishment of uh, of an artist village insofar as it, not just because it would be a cost to council and a cost that I think should be borne by the state government, given the Fringe Festival is actually a South Australian event, not just a City of Adelaide event. Um, but I'm also concerned, uh, not, at our, not for our bottom line, but for the bottom line of the many businesses and the hoteliers um, and others that provide accommodation um, uh, to artists and their support crews as it is. And I would just be very wary, uh, particularly after we've had a horror bushfire season, um, where our tourism industry has taken a hit there, um, and we've got the coronavirus where our tourism industry has taken a hit there. I wouldn't want to land another blow on them at the moment. And I think if council were going to start engaging in subsidising subsidizing, subsidizing uh, accommodation for people who would otherwise be uh, purchasing it from the usual vendors in the city, um, I think it's a really unfair, uh, really unfair thing for council to do. Um, uh, I think it actually um, smacks of the state government funding a hotel um, that would compete with our ratepayers as they are in the city of Adelaide. Um, and so uh, given the hits the tourism industry has already taken, I can't support this motion because of, because of one. Um, if it was brought in another form, perhaps, um, but uh, I, had, I would have serious reservations about seeking to effectively uh, damage an industry that's already taken such hits in recent months. We've got Councillor Ho, then Councillor Moran. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, just like to ask, though, I can ask some questions and, and then sit down and come back for, for discussion, can I? Yes, you may. Cool. Uh, sure, you, Lord Mayor. There were a few questions that I'd like to ask if I could ask the mover if he got the numbers, though. Like, how many artists are we talking about? I couldn't For uh, clarity. I think yeah. We can ask I that. think the uh, example that was provided in um, media article on this, um, which I sent around to all councillors before before the meeting, uh, in that um, Heather Kroll referred to about a hundred, a uh, hundred or so artists that were finding it difficult to find accommodation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sims. And when you're talking about affordable accommodations. What kind of numbers are you talking about? Like how, how much per head per night? That kind of numbers have you got in mind? Again, that would be something that would be negotiated through discussion with French. So you don't have a number? I haven't made up a number of what constitutes affordable um, housing, no. So you don't know whether or not 10 bucks or $100 per night per head is I haven't affordable? made up he's a number. Answer, he's of, answered the question. I haven't made up a number okay, of what right. constitutes affordable housing. Um, in terms of uh, arriving at any figure like that, I would assume that there would be consultation with the Fringe Festival, as proposed in the motion, to um, see whether or not we're in a position to meet their needs in terms of identifying sites. 
when you're talking about needs, like what are the needs in the artist village? So, Councillor Hall, I think that, that that's. I think you've asked the number of questions. Questions are usually of the administration rather well, than I the mover. I come back for the discussion. <laughs> that's all right. Thank you. Um, Councillor Moran. I think the Deputy Lord Mayor, um, I wasn't going to speak on this, I thought it was fairly straightforward. I think he's uh, not read the uh, motion. And I think to answer Councillor Ho, this isn't asking us to do it. This is asking us to, to talk to the fringe to find out, to answer exactly the questions you're asked. How many people are there? What is affordable housing? Now they're saying 100 people can't get accommodation. So therefore, the usual accommodation uh, referred to by Councillor Hyde is full and they can't afford that. Um, this is not for us to pay a cent. This is just to use our massive knowledge of the city through our administration to help the fringe sort this problem out. Uh, they might say that a, um, a hub is not necessary, it really is just um, asking people to bill at people. I regularly open my doors to French uh, entertainers for nothing and to cyclists on the tour down under. And I'm sure if that was spread out uh, to North Adelaide and inner city residents that have a spare room, that would become quite a popular thing to do. I don't quite know why the Deputy Lord Mayor's uh, laughing, you yourself, know how generous I am with my home to people and you've been over there when these people have been living there. Um, Lord Mayor, so this is this is not suggesting any um, cost to us. It's, it's doing our normal work of negotiating with the activities and events that happen in our city and finding out what they need and how we can help. Um, that we have the old um, bus station site that um, often is used as a fringe venue and they've still got some buildings um, standing there that could possibly be temporary accommodation. Uh, we've got lots of places we could do this with. It seems to me, and I don't want to bang this drum too often, that some people in this council find enormous ways to oppose things that are very straightforward by giving motives to the motion that they don't don't have. This, this motion has no motive for us to set up at our own cost of village. It has no motive to stop tourism. Surely, as you heard Heather Krause said, this is the biggest tourist attraction we Adelaide has, is the fringe. And one of the problems that we've known for a long time is they can't squeeze in all their entertainers because they're often working on a shoe street. Um, so this is to just say, open the conversation with the fringe. Heather Crow's been here tonight with her offsider, asking us to do this. So if the, if, if, if you just want to vote against everything else and change an and button, you move yourself, Deputy Lord Mayor, happy for you to do that. We would just like to get this done. We know the Deputy Lord Mayor doesn't vote for anything that anybody slightly independent puts up. But in this case, I asked him to turn that button off. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Um, Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, we all love the fringe. We love what it brings to the city and we love what it brings to our economy and uh, we love what it brings to the businesses. So I guess what we're looking at here is um, uh, what effect will this have to the tourism industry in the sense of the hotels um, and Airbnb and to the economy overall. I mean there's one thing that one key point that was brought up here by the Deputy Lord Mayor is that this is um, a state government event and this is a state government issue and that um, you know something like this maybe it should be more of a collaboration approach or maybe we need to speak to people out there in the industry that are more involved in this area to what uh, accommodation they can support for the fridge artists but if we're, go if we're going to start opening up the floodgates to supporting the artists of the fringe you had it next thing you know there might be a deputation from someone regarding the tour down under for the cyclists or there might be someone here that wants to, uh, to support the uh, artists of the Adelaide Festival then we might have someone coming in here to support um, all other events that we host for the city. Where is it going to end? Um, so I'm just mindful of um, how much as a council 
that we can participate in regards to the events that we have for our city that we all enjoy and that we all continue to support, but we have to look at our ratepayers and support the businesses out there as well to what we do in that community in that space. Thank you, members. Any other speakers? Councillor Abraham today? Lord Mayor, I'd like to uh, move an amendment if I can, please. Oh. Well, we are happy to incorporate um, part of uh, part of that. Um, what I'm happy to incorporate into uh, the motion is work with the Adelaide so, Fringe. So, Councillor Sims, I'll just let, let Councillor Abraham continue oh, sure. first. Sure. Thank you. But I need a second for that. So, Councillor Simpson, so, sorry, just so that I make sure I'm doing the right thing. Unless you're um, happy to accept the change that's before you, if you're happy to accept that as opposed to I'm just words I'm still have it in the words, Artist Village for the Adelaide Fringe 2021, given that was actually what was specifically requested. If that's added in, I'm happy with that. Because next to the word accommodation, we can probably put in artist village. Yeah. In brackets, yeah. For 2021. Oh, yes, yeah, that's yeah. Fine. I'm happy with that. So, Councillor Abraham today, if you're happy, then the mover will accept that as part of yes. as his motion. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Am I able to? And Councillor Moran, are you happy to second that? And the meeting, generally, I need nods, hands, yes. I'm not getting a response from the meeting. Yes. Why aren't you happy with this? I was happy with the original. So, sorry, I'm going to have to ask you to vote as, as opposed to mum. So, what we have is an, a, a, a variation to the motion put forward to Councillor Abraham Zay, which Councillor Sims has incorporated to the motion. So, I need to know if we are happy to accept that. Can I have a show of hands, please? Those happy to accept it? Um, those not happy to accept it? Councillor Canole, I'm not sure which way you voted then. Does that mean we accept this as the, as I just need for or against so that we can actually make move forward on this. So again, members, if I can actually see if you are happy to accept this, show of hands, that is accepted. Thank you, um, Councillor Abraham. So did you wish, wish to speak to that? I did just just briefly, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, the, the reason why I uh, I thought this might be a better uh, way of approaching it, and I thank Councillor Sims for uh, taking the feedback on board, is that uh, you know, Lord Mayor, there's a saying where uh, where we say, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go together. I think what we're trying to do here is uh, we're trying to get uh, all of our stakeholders around the table, have that conversation with them. Uh, so if we are going to bring anything new, if we are going to run a pilot or do anything long term, at least we have all the stakeholders uh, um, at, at that round table and we have everyone's input um, uh, in there. Um, what we should be mindful of, and I, um, I thank the Deputy Lord Mayor for picking this up, is that we have businesses brick and mortar businesses who have put their own capital on the line, who have put their own money where their mouth is, and they've, they've invested into the city. We, as a local government authority, um, are not there to provide accommodation. It is not our core service. And I think, if anything, we'll be uh, cutting our own ratepayers' lunch. So um, again, I thank Councillor Sims for taking the feedback on board. Uh, and I look forward to uh, what the report looks like in June 2020. Members, would anybody else like to speak to that? Councillor Pinnell? Oh, sorry, Councillor Martin, I did have you first and then Councillor Pinnell. Sorry? Councillor 
Councillor Martin. Oh, okay. Look, um, I really don't understand what this is all about. There's not much substantial difference in what's being amended to what was actually there. Um, it is a storm in a teacup, and, and I know it's caused great consternation to the team. I could hear the, uh, the raised voices in the offices today as there was discussion about this. I'm disappointed that it couldn't have been flagged a bit earlier than at this point in the day. But look, the truth of the matter is, and Councillor Moran touched on it, it is that anything that is put up by an independent will not be accepted. It will be amended. Excellent. Well, it is absolutely true. Uh, and the proof of the pudding is in exactly that. It's, it's almost identical. And moreover, what a, what a thing to be arguing about. I mean, here we have a councillor who's proposed that the city spends $40,000 on sweeping streets to keep pollen out of three streets. No, there's a, there's a, there is a parallel, Lord Mayor. Let me make it. And the um, sorry, you, we, are you spe we're speaking to the motion before us, uh, Councillor Martin, Lord Mayor, as you know. What you do is you frustrate debate and, and the capacity of people to draw parallels and analogies to illustrate the point. And you do it constantly, but mainly to me, Councillor Sims and Councillor Moran. And I'm saying, please let me finish. It is the same councillor who is proposing that we sweep streets to keep pollen out of them, diddling pharmaceuticals out of money that they would make from uh, anti-hay fever drugs. It is exactly the same point. It is the same point that Councillor Ho makes. He says coronavirus is ruining business in, in Chinatown. But there was no such sympathy for retailers and others in the East End when Lot 14 came along, the Royal Adelaide closed and businesses just lost their capacity to trade. It is just such an inconsistent argument. And frankly, frankly, it is typified by what uh, was said to me in email recently. Um, you know, you're not putting anything up. Well, I'm not putting any motions forward in this council because they are either amended, defeated, or laughed out of the place. It is just impossible to work with a majority that is so controlling, so Thank intent you. on streamlining council. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Connell. Thank you. Sorry, Councillor. I lost my place after. Um, I'm, I'm also happier with the, with the amendment simply because it's we have to look at it in a sense that this uh, the fridge etc is a commercial entity um, and it is about business and uh, you know so the event you know the people that go there aren't going there to donate their time uh, as you say whether you go somewhere with the bushfires or anything like that where you are genuinely assisting the community this is a commercial uh, um, solution or work towards one that uh, you know something is sustainable and something that uh, can be worked in, into the actual fabric of, uh, you know, of the fringe, etc. So I support it for that reason. The other is we do have to se segregate things that are of, of commercial interest and it may be made be with humor or whatever else. But um, you know, the other aspect is that if we are able to put uh, and work on these, then there are people in the community that certainly uh, deserve uh, a lot more assistance um, that, uh, we, that uh, we are more responsible for. Uh, that we can assist, at least this way we're talking something that is a sustainable commercial solution um, that works together with the stakeholders and uh, and, uh, and does uh, free us from, you know, possibly uh, putting uh, things forward that, uh, you know, that aren't intended. Thank you, members. If not, just look, I actually also do, I do see the difference between the two because really I, th I um, I understand the intent, but this way that we can actually get our stakeholders being part of the solution, I think is a really great option for us to have a look at in terms of bringing in the accommodation providers, including the AHA. Um, so, uh, and I think it would be, it is, uh, as the fringe continues to grow, it is getting harder and harder to find that accommodation, but uh, we also need to make sure that we're looking after our stakeholders. I will go back to the mover to summer. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, just to highlight for members, the only difference in terms of, and I'm happy to incorporate these changes, but the variation that Councillor Abrahamsida made was just to include for the Adelaide Fringe 2021. And that's just so that we ensure that there's some clarity around the, the time frame. Um, so I'm not sure how this is hugely different. Uh, this uh, version of Councillor Abrahamsida's amendment is hugely different, other than it has a time frame in it. Um, look, uh, 
Lord Mayor, just to give um, elected members some feedback. This has been out in the public realm for some time. I've sent uh, emails to my colleagues about this with uh, some of the background that was reported in the media. I've been in town all, all day and indeed uh, tried to seek feedback from elected members. Um, and yet I did not receive any until I was ambushed here in the meeting tonight. And we saw the choreography of Councillor Hyde coming out strongly against it and then an amendment appearing. It would be really helpful if members just, I'm pretty approachable, I'm here in town hall on a Tuesday. If you have a concern with something I'm putting forward, come and have a chat with me and let's work it through and see if we can you know, come up with a compromise rather than this um, kind of messy process on the fly. But that said, I do hope that um, members support this. I think it is a good opportunity for us to address the issues that have been raised by the, uh, the Adelaide Fringe and other stakeholders. It's not going to be damaging to businesses in any way. In fact, if uh, by providing this kind of uh, investigative work, um, we are addressing some of the issues that have been faced that deter potential artists from coming to the fringe, then in effect we're giving um, an economic boost to our city businesses and ratepayers. So I urge people to back this. Uh, to address the point that um, uh, issue um, that uh, Councillor Ho raised in his cross-examination of me earlier, um, he asked, is there, uh, asked what um, volume of uh, accommodation we're talking about. Um, I think Heather Kroll referenced a few hundred people potentially, but again, those numbers and so on could be worked out um, through consultation. So no numbers and no sense of what um, constitutes affordable accommodation at this stage. But look, I hope members can um, support this. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that's carried. Members, that takes us to actually, let's have a look. Uh, members, we're two hours in. I'm going to take a short five minute um, comfort break. Um, so, members of the gallery and media, we're just going to have five minute comfort stop.
Thank you. Uh, members, if I could ask you to take your seats. Thank you for allowing me to have a Councillor Sims, uh, 15.2, event accessibility. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I move the motion <laughs> as printed and seek a seconder. <coughs> seconder, Councillor Ho. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, and look, I know this is irregular, but I should just correct the record on a comment I made previously. I did ref say that no one had approached me in relation to the previous motion. In fairness to Councillor Kuros, she did, in fact, um, approach me and we had a discussion. So I apologise for um, that omission. Not related to the um, Thank you, of this Sims. motion, but I, I'm sorry about that, Mary. Um, so, uh, in terms of this motion um, that's before us, Lord Mayor, this is, or the genesis in this, is again um, turning a mind to uh, the festival season that we're about to head into um, at the moment. And it's my um, belief that everybody, all citizens in our city, um, have a right to be able to participate in the cultural and civic life of our city. And we know that for people with a disability, there can be some real barriers um, around doing that. And of course, the City of Adelaide has been doing good work in terms of promoting access and inclusion in the city. But one of the um, areas where there is uh, sometimes, a, um, uh, sometimes a deficit in terms of action is in festivals and events. Um, and we have um, in the city in James Place a, um, a changing, uh, a mobile toilet and changing facility uh, for people with particular high needs disability, which is fantastic. Um, but of course, a lot of festivals and events on at this time of year don't provide access to that kind of facility for their patrons. And that means that if uh, somebody is at a um, key festival or event, um, they have to go all the way down to James Place in order to access uh, the toilet. Um, and to me, it's a pretty basic human right that people should be able to access those kind of facilities. So anything we can do as a council to encourage that, I think we should look at. And so what I'm proposing is that um, we get administration to come back with uh, some costings around setting up a fund to promote uh, access to those kinds of things. Um, there's a mobile toilet changing facility. They're called a Marvelu. Um, I'm not sure if members have had an opportunity to lock them up, uh, look them up, but they're a really uh, amazing facility, mobile special uh, toilet for people who have high needs. And uh, it'd be fantastic if we could uh, provide a grant to festivals and events so that they can make those available. They cost about eighteen. Uh, they cost about eighteen hundred dollars to hire and um, council could play a role in facilitating that. But there are other examples as well that have been given here. Administration have provided some within their report too. And of course, this is targeted at all festivals um, and events in our city. But in particular, I make the point, Lord Mayor, that some of the smaller events that we have within our city are not always aware of um, what they can do to promote best practice in terms of access and inclusion. So this is trying to uh, address that gap. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Ho? Members? Councillor Kouros? I just want to say thank you to Councillor Sims for bringing this forward. Uh, we, are, we want to be more of an inclusive city, so this um, stretches it out to include everyone to be able to enjoy the events that we have in our city. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so I just commend this motion. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Members? If not, I'd also like to um, uh, publicly acknowledge and commend the work of the Access and Inclusion Advisory Panel that we have here at the City Council. Um, they work with us very closely on a number of projects and I, I look forward to seeing how they can uh, work into this body of work that will come forward. Councillor Sims, to sum up. Thanks very much, Lord Mayor, and uh, thanks everybody for uh, your support on this. Um, I look forward to seeing um, what administration comes back with. But I think as we head into the festival season, it's really important to reflect on um, what we can do to ensure that everybody can engage in our city's cultural and civic life. Um, I think that's a fundamental human right of everybody to be able to do that. 
And we talk a lot about making Adelaide a, a vibrant city, um, but how vibrant is it if not everybody is able to engage and participate? Um, and uh, so I look forward to this work coming down the line. Thank you, members. The vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Division has been called. Those members voting in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until the division has been completed. Why? Councillor Martin, Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Noll, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kira, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Sims, thank you. That takes us to 15.3, motion on notice, recycling and waste management. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. People will be getting sick of the sound of my voice. So um, as hard as that is to believe, I see Councillor Kira smiling. Um, I will keep this brief. I move the uh, motion as printed. Look for a second. Sorry, members, I look for a second. Councillor Kouros. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, and thanks, Councillor Kouros. Look, this is um, a pretty uh, self-evident um, motion. We recently uh, conducted an audit of our recycling bins within the city. And I think uh, from memory, there are about 14 on our public um, streets. And um, I think we could be certainly improving the coverage of uh, recycling bins, but also looking at e-waste um, and uh, electrical appliances and the like, and what can be done to encourage recycling of those, and green waste bins too in public spaces. And so what I'm asking for here is some work to be done to uh, get some costings and to have that presented back to council. And it may be that what we do is have green waste bins in key places like Rundle Mall, like the parklands or places where people are sitting out having a bite to eat. It may be that we could look at installing e-waste facilities in places like our parking lots and the like so that people know that they can come and drop off um, unwanted electrical appliances. Um, but I think whatever we can do to encourage best practice uh, recycling and waste management, we should look at. And um, I know that Councillor Hyde has a motion coming up on this topic shortly, which I'm also supportive of, but this is uh, something that is practical that could be um, done in the short term as well as we work towards broader goals. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Corrins. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Well, the motion speaks for itself, and uh, uh, Councillor Sims articulated it very well. But I just want to commend Councillor Sims for bringing something into Council, which is core, which is our core business. Um, I was very excited to see that on the agenda tonight. Um, and yes, yeah, so it, it, to encourage best practice in regards to um, our core business is um, always of full support. Thank you, members. If not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, members know I love to talk rubbish, um, and uh, I'm really uh, delighted to see the support for this. I'm feeling the love tonight, Lord Mayor. Sorry, feeling the love. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? No division call. That division, is. No. <laughs> that, that is carried. Division. Oh, he did call. He did call the division. Division has been called. All those members in favour, please rise until the division has been declared in full. Councillor Sims, Councillor Kouros, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kim, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, members. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, motion on notice. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Given concerns have raised uh, the effect that this might have on businesses, and it was not my intent. As I understand it, your intent to have such an effect on businesses. Um, I'm going to withdraw this and redraft it um, to come in at the March meeting. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. So um, that is withdrawn. Um, that takes us to 15.3, Councillor Kouros. Oh, sorry, 15.5, Councillor Kouros. So I take the motion as read. Yeah, and Deputy Lord Mayor second. Councillor Cross, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, I would, thank you. Um, I just basically don't want to complicate this and make this political. It's just a very simple motion, just asking for an extension uh, in regards to the current consultation that we have regarding the um, needs analysis and the unsolicited bid proposal. Um, we uh, met with several um, users of the Aquatic Centre and residents, and they expressed their views that they found the interface to be a bit clunky. Um, and not user friendly. Um, they also, the migrant community um, 
uh, that use the facility um, couldn't navigate with the way through it and express uh, their views um, in regards to finding it very difficult to be able to use the your say. Um, so I would like um, to uh, to work on that and we can work on the interface of the um, of the current consultation to make it more user friendly um, and because we're going to be changing that if we can if this, this uh, motion goes through then we can extend it for another three weeks hopefully um, and to give people the opportunity to really um, come forward to express their views in regards to the consultation. Um, I, I'd like to just point out this is actually the first time the public have been consulted on in regards to the Aquatic Centre. Um, it is you know uh, so important that we get the all, a lot of information in regards to it. Um, I really want to see a lot more uh, consultation, maybe face-to-face -face consultation. Um, I would like to um, see a, 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 someone from an administration to be on site at the Aquatic Centre, maybe two, three times a week, a certain period of time, advertise that. I know that uh, that uh, might just add to the layers of this consultation, but I just think that the users are so important to get that information right. And um, and because they're going into the centre and speaking to the staff, um, they're there to keep the place safe and not to be involved in any political argument or discussion. So just to keep that focus away from the aquatic centre staff. Um, so. Um, the per that is the purpose of the extension, so it is not meant to be anything political, it's not meant to be anything other than just as simple as that. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor Kerr. Yeah, thanks, uh, Lord Mayor. Look, I'll just uh, briefly commend Councillor uh, for this for this motion. I think it is I think it is warranted. I think the um, there were uh, quite plainly some shortcomings in the uh, in the interface of the actual consultation. Um, uh, website and uh, I think that uh, under the circumstances, I think that the public will welcome extra time on this topic. So I wholeheartedly commend this motion. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, um, Councillor Kouros and I do take a slightly different um, view on this one, and I will support uh, the motion because I do agree that the interface uh, needs to be improved. Um, but my view is that um, this does not go far enough in terms of fixing the consultation process. Um, I have been on the public record for some time expressing my concern about the consultation process, which I believe is deeply flawed. And that is because Council is only asking the community one option, not the range of other options that are available to it under the needs analysis. So whilst this may improve the process somewhat by you know, fixing some of the issues with the web interface, and I have had similar feedback to Councillor Kouros from the community, it does not address the structural uh, deficiencies in this deeply flawed consultation process. Really what it is doing, I fear, is trying to make a, a purse out of a sow's ear and uh, I don't think it's going to fly with the community because people recognise that this consultation process is deeply flawed and has been botched because of the uh, way in which it's been constructed because of the narrow questions that have been asked. Um, so whilst I'll support this, um, it's with a heavy heart that I do so because it's not addressing the uh, broader structural problems with um, this uh, survey. In terms of getting feedback face to face from the community, um, I would also encourage maybe our administration to think about going along to the debate tomorrow night that I know has been organised um, by the Parklands Association. There'll be lots of members of the community there. Um, no doubt some will have views either way on uh, the proposal. It'd be good to talk to them face to face and to gather some of their feedback and to feed um, that into the process. And of course, there's a meeting on Sunday as well. So um, I uh, encourage that to be taken into account. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Knoll. Just to also uh, commend Councillor Kouros uh, for the motion, but let us not forget there are there are two uh, two processes in place. One's more specific about uh, the the unsolicited bid and what they're doing. The other is is what we are doing. And as I've said, how many uh, countless times now when we've talked on this issue, that this is about uh, 
the community consultation, consulting with other councils, etc., and all the other stakeholders in, 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 uh, that are involved here. We got a, a subsequent uh, motion in regards to asking uh, further uh, for potential support uh, around uh, from governments. All those things should be on the table. That is what this consultation is about, the need and also how we're going to achieve it and with which partners we can do this. And all of these things are uh, linked together and then we pick a solution that suits uh, our budgets, our constituents, you know, and, and the needs and that of, of uh, the, those that are users uh, to the best advantage of the city. And that is what we're discussing. Every, all the time there's narrowing down uh, to one proposal, they are just one of the proposals. And I think we've just got to keep remembering that and keep saying that because we are all on the same page trying to achieve the best outcome uh, for the ratepayers and the wider community. Members, if not, I'll go. I'm oh, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and I commend Councillor Kouros for bringing this motion. Um, for, for reference, this motion came out of a, was essentially a, a, a shotgun um, community meeting that was held um, on the Aquatic Centre. And that, that community meeting um, was originally just going to be attended by myself, and I was expecting there to just be a handful of Vietnamese um, people in attendance, um, noting that the Aquatic Centre is used very much by new migrants and people that don't speak English as a first language. Um, it then garnered a significant amount of interest and some other issues came to light. But it's worth reflecting on section 2B um, of this motion before us, increasing the availability of translation and interpretive options to assist members of the multicultural community in completing the survey. One thing that was very evident at that community meeting, and in fact it was in part the reason that the community meeting um, uh, was called for was uh, because of the amount of misinformation, uh, fear mongering, um, and in some cases outright, liar, outright lies that have been circulating in the community. Um, uh, that actually had uh, a huge effect on the multicultural users of the aquatic centre. And it's all well and good um, uh, for councillors to play political games um, uh, with the aquatic centre and treat it as some sort of plaything. Um, uh, but we've got to remember the human cost of this. We've got to remember the human cost of this. Um, uh, and sadly, sadly, it became evident to me after that meeting um, uh, that members of the multicultural community have essentially become victims in this political game playing. They were worried that the aquatic centre was going to close down in the very near future. They were worried they wouldn't have somewhere um, to use aquatic facilities. And none of that has actually been put on the table. No one here intends to close the aquatic centre. We certainly don't. Um, uh, and uh, we've been given no proposals that would actually close down the aquatic centre or limit their access to it. But it's the fear mongering that's been in the community, it's the fear mongering flyers that have been put out that has actually taken advantage of people who don't necessarily have all the information at their disposal and because English is not their primary language, they don't have the ability um, uh, to discern and, and, and apply a huge amount of critical thought to these flyers that come through, these radio grabs that are run, and the huge amount of fear mongering that's undertaken. So for me, the most important one in this is 2B, and that's to actually ensure that we're getting the right information, the facts, to ensure we're getting the facts to those members of the multicultural community who make up such a large proportion of users of the centre. And I would just encourage um, members here and also members of the public and other interest groups who are helping whip up this fear to be very mindful of the language they use. Um, because uh, when we go out there, we need, to be, uh, we need to be careful that we're not causing an inordinate amount of pain and worry in the community. And that's exactly what's happened today. And that's exactly why Councillor Kouros and I are bringing this motion before us. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. Did you wish to speak? I do wish to speak because I'm sorry I got caught up in some family business and I've only caught the tail end of this. But there has been no fear mongering from Councillor okay. Council. <laughs> the thought of a commercial Victorian business taking over our park lands and building their commercial offices on it and their indoor sports facilities just for their personal use. And giving us a tiny aquatic centre is something that no other council has ever even contemplated. It is a serious thing. And to label your people that disagree with you as fear mongering and somehow politicising this decision 
is disingenuous and um, I'd have a few other words, but uh, I couldn't say them. Sadly, the Deputy Lord Mayor did not inform his fellow councillors that he was conducting a public meeting for, um, uh, for the users of the pool, who he's labelled as non-English speaking people, which I think is a bit rude. Um, it would have been good if he'd asked all of us, especially the people that represent North Adelaide, I understand Councillor Kouros turned up some time later, but it is clearly politicising. If, if somebody is politicising it, it is our South Ward councillor um, who uh, has done that. If I had been asked by a member of parliament to uh, front and speak, I would have certainly that extended that, that especially to Councillor Hope particularly, um, to come and speak to the people down there. That, that was not done. It was clearly a political move on somebody that doesn't seem to understand the um, serious nature of the precedent that this is causing. Um, but that, sadly, is what we come to expect. I, I have two minds about this. Clearly, the, um, the empire striking back, the crows, are putting, flooding the advertiser with um, their pretty pictures of uh, large pools and so forth. And I think what Councillor Kouros is really is trying to buy them a little bit of extra time for, to marshal their troops. Basically, the, the verdict is in from the consultation. People do not want it. So that is what, if we closed it on the normal date, the agreed to date, that is what we'd be getting, a huge, huge opposition, not from people from North Adelaide or Walkerville, but from the whole state, because that's a mistake, I think, that a lot of the media make, that it's just the people that live near the parklands that care about them. That's offensive to South Australia, and it's not true. I don't think that we should try and buy some more time. I will vote for this, because any consultation is good consultation. But I think the motives of the people putting them this up are very clear. Members, Councillor Martin. Uh, look, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I am just appalled and amazed that there is this paradigm among the members of Team Adelaide that says taking a piece of parkland and giving it over to a major commercial development is not controversial, is not political, uh, and any fear of what might happen is something which has been whipped up by some irresponsible individuals. This is the paradigm in which they live. The truth, the truth of the matter is that in the real world, people are looking at this and saying, yeah, we're worried, we're very worried. And they're worried not because of the fundamental that's at stake here, but because of the behaviours so far, secrecy for a year or more, information was withheld from the public. And then when it was deemed appropriate to go out to the public, this is, as Councillor Kouros observed, the first time that we've gone out to consultation. Lord Mayor, I'm not revealing any confidential information. Everything I, I have said- I wasn't suggesting you were, Councillor Martin. I just was asking for clarity about a year or more. Well, this, uh, this proposal uh, has, as the, uh, the media has reported, and Lord Mayor, look, I, I'm not going to engage with you on this uh, because I know your view. I know your view. Your view, your view is. Actually, you your, don't know my view, Councillor Martin. Yes. So. I, saw, I saw you congratulating the Crows at the weekend on their new design. You were. The media reported it. It's got children's water. It's got children's facilities. It's going to be lovely. Additionally, on ABC News last March, why would we support this? That's your view. And that's fine. You're entitled to that. But it's not appropriate for you and your colleagues to create this paradigm that says anyone who is uneasy about it is acting somehow crazily or unethically. Your problem is that this has been dogged by secrecy and by a consultation process that is completely flawed, completely flawed. You're asking people, not the threshold question, do you want commercial development on the parklands? You're asking, what do you reckon of the Crow's new facility? That's not a consultation. 
Then you're saying to them, there's a need to dancers. Here are three options. There aren't three options. There are dozens of options. And you're asking them in such an infantile fashion. You're not asking serious questions about people in the needs analysis. What would you think about including water play facilities? Every successful aquatic centre around this country has water play facilities. Doesn't even feature in our consultation. And you've heard tonight that the information that's been imparted in regard to the, the amount of space that's being returned to parklands is at best in doubt, at worst, deliberately misleading. Now, you ask yourself, are people entitled to feel suspicious? Darn right, I won't be voting for this. It's just an extension of something that is a pathetic attempt at consultation. Members? Um, I will actually also acknowledge that the feedback and the deputations that came to APLA um, last week also uh, was part about how difficult the user interface was. And so from members of the community that want to input into the consultation process. Um, so thank you, Councillor Kouros, because I actually think if we can improve that interface and do some face-to-face, -face, as suggested, that that will go a long way for us to be able to um, share the uh, information with our community. Um, the consultation packs, in terms of what we were going out with, um, did come to all council before it went out. And I don't recall that sort of feedback when we actually uh, considered what was going out to consultation. If there are other questions that we actually need to ask, then perhaps point, we can point, actually point of order, Lord Mayor. Point of that order, I am speaking, and that is not correct. We did actually get the consultation information through council before it went out. And everyone agreed. Of course, your team Thank you, Councillor Moran. I will finish speaking now. So um, I will actually, and I also wanted to uh, um, acknowledge and congratulate that it was 8.02 before the words Team Adelaide were used tonight. That's fantastic. I'll go back to the mover to sum up. The sound is proud. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, wow, the actress, I love it, I love it in this chamber. It's just they're getting better and better. Um, sure look, or not. Uh, the, uh, the motion was put in right before the AFC put out their, uh, what, their what type of pool they're going to put in on the weekend. So I had no idea, and it was not for that reason. So I want to make it clear that this was brought on by feedback that I received, by feedback that we received at the time where I actually just popped in to have a listen. Um, I didn't expect to be speaking to any of the, uh, the people that were there. Um, it actually, um, the uh, it was tweeted that this was going to, um, that they were going to be there with for the Vietnamese community. May I add that Councillor Ho is Chinese, not Vietnamese. Um, so, um, and there, um, it was tweeted that residents came along, and there were actually that users who came along who saw something happening outside the aquatic centre. Then that is how I formulated my reasons for wanting to um, have this extension and ch uh, to work on the consultation. I might, I might just want to point out in all this theatrics that you know it was in 2017 that Council Moran did say that the only way that the, uh, the aquatic centre can be saved is it partnered, had a, a partner with the um, Adelaide Football Club. I want to point that out there. It is on your watch, Councillor Martin, for the time that you've been in council, that this has been an issue, the aquatic centre. It is on your watch that we are here today oh God, trying to solve this up, you're supposed to be problem. summing up the I'm summing up the motion to why I believe no. that this consultation should, should be extended. Members, it's members, can I actually, if summer. you could no, please please stop. Attack her order in the chamber. Well, would Thank you. you. Keep order in the chamber? Councillor Kouros, if you could finish summing on, up, on thank you. To why on the motion, thank you. I, I know the words, thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Kouros, if I could ask you please to sum up on the motion. Yes, yeah, so this is the reason why I would like to extend, extend the consultation because it's very important that we get the correct information, not the political, personal politics that is continuously played out here in chamber and outside to the media. And we need On to the know motion, the 
reason or how the aquatic centre is used by the public. Um, so I would like this consultation to be extended on that basis. Thank you. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that the is vision. carried. The vision. Absolutely. Those members voting in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until the division has been called in full. Councillor Sims, Councillor Kouros, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kira, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canal, Councillor Abrahamsdale. Thank you. Um, that takes us to, that's in favour, thank you. 15.6, um, Councillor Kouros, we have. Sorry, Councillor Moran just called me a quote unquote short ass. I would just ask her to withdraw that statement on the record. Uh, Lord Mayor, he just called us racist and anti multiculturalist. I think that beats short ass by a long length. I did not say I racist. Asked, yes, I said you did. Anti multicultural. Well, that is racist. Members, I'm going to 15.6, Councillor Kouros, motion on notice on Kingston Terrace. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just take that as read. Thank you, second to Councillor Abraham today. Oh, how about a more Adelaide person? I'm an area councillor. Councillor Moran, Councillor Kouros, if you would like to continue. Can I read this before I continue? Or because it's just too hostile here. I just can we have a break? I just does anyone calm down? No, we can take a moment if you like, but I would like you to speak to the motion. Yeah, we're, we're, only, we're only all hit up because of Councillor Kouros. Okay, Why does she want to drink? Councillor Kouros. Okay. Take a break. I'm waiting for Councillor Kouros to talk to her motion. <laughs> Members. So, thank you, Lord Mayor. Right. Um, while I so appreciate the administration's comments and notes um, in their recommendation, um, I've sp uh, spoken to the residents of Kingston Terrace and uh, they have a different view in what they're ex experiencing on Kingston Terrace. So over the years, the footpath has been built up um, and it has a very dangerous step up from the verge, making it very difficult for the elderly um, and young families with children and prams to be able to access the footpath with, and the road. Um, on top of that, there's also stormwater issues um, and there's always been a, a the drainage issues uh, are becoming a problem. So because the um, it's not accessible for them to be able to step down into the road, they're stepping into puddles, and, and it's just it's just not working, uh, not not efficient for them to be able to park in their street and to be able to um, uh, you know uh, park efficiently on the other side also of um, where the parklands are because it becomes pulled with <coughs> water. Um, so on top of all that, it is also proven to be very difficult for them to cut the lawn edges safely as there is large gaps in the bluestone and it collects a lot of weeds and you know it's not being uh, not uh, friendly is friendly for them to be able to mow their lawn. So I get I get what they're saying. So if you go down to Kingston Terrace, you can on a rainy day you can see how much water pools right there. Um, and uh, you know for the elderly um, getting up and down, they have to travel all the way up the street, uh, all the way up and down to to be able to access the footpath. So. That's Thank you. I'd like to bring this forward into the budget. Thank you, Councillor Corus. Um, Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak to her? Members? Thank you. Councillor Martin and Sims. Councillor Martin and then Councillor oh, Sims. Okay, fine. Uh, look, I, I, um, I can't remember an occasion uh, on which I have so wholeheartedly agreed with Councillor Corus. Um, this is a worthwhile measure and um, I support this entirely as opposed to her support for the Crows proposal. It is an excellent motion, Lord Mayor. Um, look, this road is odd. Uh, there is a camber on it, um, which uh, I think Councillor Kouros was referring to, which leads to a very deep gutter. Um, it is a danger and particularly during wet weather, there is a, a tendency for flooding in that area. Um, and the quality of the bluestone in that part of Kingston Terrace just doesn't match the western end of Kingston Terrace. That's a superb job. It, it is one of the dress circles of Adelaide. And 
rightly, the residents of the area that we're talking about here think that it ought to be replicated. Um, I think, uh, additionally, that the car parking on the edge of Park 6 um, is informal. It is a waste of parklands. Cars park higgledy-piggledy because there is no curbing, because there is no marking. Um, there is, of course, a waste of space when it comes to parking. Uh, I think a uniform uh, treatment of the area, as we have in other areas of the parklands, is entirely reasonable. Now, Lord Mayor, um, I did raise this during the last term of council with the administration at length, and it was always suggested to me that the cost, which at that time it was put to me would be somewhere between two and three million dollars, was unreasonable for this particular part of North Adelaide. I put an entirely contrary view, the one that Councillor Kuros puts, and that is that that two or three million, or whatever it is, is worthwhile for correcting what is at this time an area which is very difficult for people in the, uh, 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 the direct vicinity to negotiate, not to mention visitors. Um, so look, I wholeheartedly support this. Kingston Terrace should be number one on the capital projects uh, for the coming financial year. And I urge my colleagues to support Councillor Kouros on this. It is a perfect motion. Please endorse it. Councillor Sims. Members? Councillor Abraham Um Just briefly, Lord Mayor, I would like to commend Councillor Kouros for uh, sticking up for her area and bringing a worthwhile motion into the chamber. Uh, and uh, I look forward to, uh, um, I guess, getting down and dirty when we're all fighting for different bits in the in the budget. So it's going to be an interesting year. Thank you. Okay. Members, a question, Councillor Martin. Um, th this motion actually puts it on our capital works list. It's not open to debate afterwards. No, this motion actually asks us to consider it as part of the integrated business plan and budget. So when um, all of the projects come forward for consideration, this will be considered along with that. So it's not a commitment, it's just a no. put it on the list. No. Oh, okay. I'm no, because um, at this point in time, given we're about to go into budget deliberations, we won't actually put anything uh, directly into the budget, everything comes forward for consideration for when we look at the budget as a whole. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, I am happy to support this. Um, I, uh, looking at these issues, I always take guidance from North Ward councillors. Councillor Kouros is obviously passionate about it. Councillor Martin, I know Councillor Moran as well. So, um, yes, I'm, I'm happy to support this, bearing in mind that it's an investigation and we'll see what um, information comes back. But I look forward to this along with um, lighting options in North Adelaide coming as part of the budget uh, consideration process, if they can be disentangled from the master plan in time. Thanks, Lord. Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Kouros to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, so I'm really excited that we'll be able to, we're able to get to core business and add this uh, to the budget. And I'm sure the residents of Kingston Terrace will be quite happy to finally see that um, on the books. Thank you. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Those members voting in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until the division has been called. Yeah. Councillor Martin. I think it's Councilor, called council, don't you? Today, Councillor Knoll, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kira, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Moran and Councillor Sims. Thank you. Members, that takes us 15.7. Councillor Martin, motion or notice statement, federal funding for aquatic centre upgrade. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I require oh, a second. Two hands up. Three hands up. <laughs> uh, sorry. Okay. Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Martin. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's good. Um, I was just about to say, I don't think the Deputy Lord Mayor will support this because he voted against the council, at Apple rather. But nevertheless, that's great to have his, uh, his moniker on this. Um, look, there's been, uh, as Councillor Kouros observed, a lot of misinformation spread about the Aquatic Centre. And, and as I think uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor said, there have been some outright <coughs> lies told, outright lies there have been. But the truth of the matter is that um, it's not losing three quarters of a million dollars a year, as uh, I've read in places. 
Um, and it is not about to fall over. In fact, um, uh, the administration has confirmed only recently that there, there has never been an engineer's report into the assertion that uh, it has a, um, uh, an end of life diagnosis. In fact, uh, the administration assures uh, everybody, including ratepayers, that uh, the centre is in no immediate danger and in the short term requires no funding because we have an excellent maintenance program in place. Now, what this does is allow us a window, window oh, well, look, I'll, I'll read Lord Mayor, um, the administration's response. And it, it is that, um, um, so administration notes the intent of the motion on notice. If council supports the motion, administration will prepare appropriate correspondence to respective state. Oh, well, that's good. Leaders. Um, in terms of soundness of the building, this is the administration, we can confirm there's no immediate or short term need to close it. There's an ongoing maintenance program designed to keep it maintained and safe. So, you know, that's a great result. And that means that there's a window of opportunity for we as a council to agree uh, to look at other options. And uh, it would be wise of us to look at other options because anything could happen. Uh, you know, the, 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 the crows could go broke tomorrow or the AFL may say we're revoking your license and they wouldn't be there. So we need to look at options. And this one, uh, uh, this motion allows us to, uh, in fact, do what the ratepayers are saying, uh, that is have a look at whether state or federal government might be interested in uh, uh, affording some funds from one of their programs. Now, fundamentally, um, uh, state and federal governments, particularly around elections, are interested in providing funding. Um, Lord knows they gave it to the Crows $15 million towards a new headquarters. If the Crows can get $15 million for a new headquarters, the city of Adelaide should be able to get $15 million for an aquatic centre that is of world standard and indeed is uh, commensurate with our status as one of the capital cities in Australia. So uh, here I'm asking, and, and I do ask uh, all of the members of council, uh, I won't use the words team, but team, um, I'd really appreciate your so support on this, not least because if it's not supported, it looks pretty crook. It looks like you're only betting on one option. Uh, this allows us to say to our ratepayers, honestly and openly, we're open to all options uh, and the Lord Mayor is going to write and find out what's available. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Councillor Sims. Thanks Lord Mayor. Look, I um, totally uh, support this. Um, indeed, this is what we should have been doing some time ago, that is uh, reaching out to other stakeholders and seeing um, what options are available. Um, it's my hope that we have a really open consultation and discussion with our residents and ratepayers at some point about um, the Aquatic Centre. I agree that there have been a lot of mistruths and one of those is the framing of um, this uh, debate as being as if the Aquatic Centre is some kind of huge um, loss for the city, um, as if it's some kind of burden that we have to uh, carry. The reality is it's a public service. It's not designed to um, make a profit well there. It's designed to meet the needs of um, our community. And a lot of those elements may not necessarily be um, capable of making a profit. A lot of community services don't generate a profit. And that's why they remain in public hands, so that they can meet the needs of the community. And uh, it's disappointing to me that um, the city of Adelaide could be doing, going down the path of um, being a capital city that doesn't have a public swimming pool. I mean, what does that say about our city and what does that say about how we regard our residents and ratepayers? And I know it's unpopular to talk about rates and, and so on, but, um, you know, realistically, at some point, we have to start getting real with the community and start talking about what are the options, let's put them on the table and let's work with them to find a solution. But I think this goes some part to doing that in terms of lobbying other levels of government to um, engage. I'd love to see us have some sort of a citizen's jury process where we sit down with the community and work through the range of options and come up with a consensus proposal that comes to this council 
that is depoliticised and that breaks the gridlock because I think um, council has made a real mess of the Crows process. It's very difficult to unscramble the egg, um, but I'm hopeful we can do so. Um, and Councillor Martin's motion is a, uh, a good way, I think, of um, us moving in that direction. Councillor Kouros, did you wish to speak? So I too support this motion, Mayor, um, not because I'm a cook, but because I think it's the best way forward um, to if we see if we can nudge the uh, state government a little bit more uh, to see if they can support um, and to be able to uh, continue having the uh, aquatic centre there. Um, if you look at the history that was given to us um, from 2003, um, there was a lot of association with the state government through that time, with funding, and then funding was removed and then declining to have the elite centre there and then, you know, all these variables, things have happened over time with the state government. However, you know, now that we are, for the first time, we're really, really addressing this issue and not doing, not looking at a, a band-aid fix and just sweeping it under the carpet and then hoping that it would last another five more years. We're actually really looking at the longevity of this aquatic centre. And if the state government are willing to come on board and, and support it and be able to keep it there for the community, why not? Um, why not? Let's not. Let's look at that. That would be fantastic, and then we'll end this personal politics of political arguments of, of and, and, and in every way. So yes, I welcome this motion, and I hope that we, that uh, the state government come to the party. But let's see. Councillor Canon. <coughs> I mean, I'm too. Uh be happy with the motion and I think it's worth pro uh, progressing. As a question, I mean, uh, have we had conversations with other councils in regards to uh, any sort of collaborations? See ya. Three or Lord Mayor, at this stage you know we're going through a needs analysis. Um, that is a, a challenge for this council to undertake. The intention will be, as we progress, to certainly have conversations with other parties. That is part of our forward pro program. Um, and in fact, it would be an expectation that we will talk to our, our neighbouring councils as part of that process, along with the state government. Yep. So as, as, a, as a question to the mover um, through the chair, uh, is this a, an opportunity to, to uh, uh, bring the councils into this motion as well? Because obviously they're another tier of government that have a, a stakeholding in, in the centre. And that way we are talking to all of the potential uh, uh, partners uh, and uh, doing it in, in a, if, as part of this motion. So are you moving an amendment to the motion that you want the mover to consider? Yes. Would you like to tell us what that is? Um, so uh, support the, the, uh, the Premier and the Prime Minister um, and uh, or Premier, also the Prime Minister and uh, mayors of neighbouring councils. So is Councillor Martin prepared to include that amendment as part of the motion? Uh, yes, look, I don't have any problem. Can I uh, assist and just suggest um, that it might be better to do a new sentence to accommodate the councillor's request? So leave that as it is and then uh, just add um, something like additionally, um, it is requested that the Lord Mayor write to neighbouring councils. Is it neighbouring councils or all councils? Neighbouring councils? I don't think we can wordsmith the amendment. The amendment is the amendment that was just given forward. So, so yes, the Lord Mayor, uh, neighbouring councils uh, uh, request that the, the neighbouring councils yeah. right, take them, write to them. Yeah, I think that's actually what the top part already says. I'm not sure why the separation, but um, I think it, I think the first bit actually um, says it. Yeah, I, I think it says it. I don't think it requires any additional. I think it's all in there. So, Councillor Martin, happy? Yes. Deputy Lord Mayor, you happy? 
Yes or no? Uh, no, I was just going to suggest that. No, we, we can't suggest that there's actually been an amendment to the motion. Um, as in terms of neighbouring councils, as a suggestion, as identified through the needs analysis, because we had a lot of data and source data that came to us, rather than us speaking to councils that actually are not necessarily um, as identified with the needs analysis. Can we add that in? Yes. I've got a nod there. Thank I've got you. a nod there. Um, um, because of the, the response of the data gives us very clear information as to which councils we should be speaking to. Yes. So you, you are welcome to speak to it. So yes. that's actually been included in the motion by the mover and second. Okay. So fundamentally now we are, we are uh, leaving this open to speaking with all, all the stakeholders. And this is as in the intent, I think, of all members, including the, the independent team, um, that we are engaging all of the, uh, you know, the various people, various uh, governments and so forth that can, can help us to put together the best proposal we can and the best uh, aquatic centre. We do have to remember, yes, there isn't an issue with the building not, not uh, uh, being in good condition. What we do have is the facilities are, are breaking down and need greater repair, and that is what the, the expenses are. Uh, the roof, and that isn't your issue. And, but don't forget, re people don't go into that for the for their shelter. They're going there to get wet rather than saving themselves from it. Um, and it is important that you know this is what we try to maintain, like uh, many other uh, uh, council as assets that have been let run down. Um, so anyway, so yes, I, I also commend you. Thank you, motion. Thank you for that amendment, Councillor Knoll. Um, members, would anybody else like to speak? Councillor Abraham today. Just a quick question off administration, if I can, Lord Mayor. Um, when was the last time that any uh, or any other level of government approached us about funding? Um, the uh, funding any upgrades to the aquatic centre, whether it's federal or state. Yeah. Could you just clarify? So, uh, yeah. So, um, did we have uh, uh, in the past have we had the state government or federal government approach us to provide us with funding to uh, uh, to upgrade the aquatic centre? Yeah, three will mean that we have had that, but I'll get Tom to clarify. Thank you, Lord Mayor. In response to the question, uh, the state or federal government have not approached the Aquatic Centre. Council have approached the state and the federal government in regards to funding. And the state government uh, funded the uh, Adelaide Aquatic Centre whilst it was recognised as a state aquatic centre. And they contributed, it, which was in the public report, $250,000 per year. It, uh, however, its last figure was 500000 recognition of the transition to Marion. And that was around, I think, around about 2005, 2006, working towards that 2008 opening of the Marion uh, Centre. Just a follow-up question, if I may, Lord Mayor. Um, was there any attempt by the council to uh, entice the state government or the federal government to, um, uh, I guess, uh, undertake upgrades at the aquatic centre here in North Adelaide rather than at Marion? Through you, Lord Mayor. Yes, there was. Um, we've had made a number of requests. However, the state government were quite adamant in their position based on the State Aquatic Centre moving to Marion, and they were going to invest all their energies and funding into the Marion Centre. Thank you. Uh, if, if I may, um, I've got a couple of uh, couple of other questions. Um, the diving tower. How long has that been closed, and is it still closed at the Aquatic Centre? I'll take that on notice and come back to you. And um, the concrete tiered seating uh, inside the pool as well, is that, uh, is, is that close to, to the public? In part, and I'll be able to come back and take it on notice. Okay. Uh, that, that's all for the time being. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillors, if De Deputy Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, I just want to commend um, Councillor Martin for bringing this motion and it's glad to see he's on the same page um, as I am. Very encouraging. 
hopefully we're entering a new era. Of course, this is a position that um, has long been held by myself, Councillor Kouros, and I know others in the council chamber. We've, uh, for a long time now, been talking about the need for others to pay their fair share when it comes to the Aquatic Centre. We know the Aquatic Centre is a regional facility. That was confirmed in the needs analysis that because of this process um, uh, was kicked off after what we understand now from that questioning from Councillor Pemsaday and Councillor Kouros' report into the history of the Senate has been an ongoing issue for near two decades um, and one that the City of Adelaide has uh, forever put in the too hard basket but this Council is now dealing with this very important issue and in doing so we need to again be aware that it's a regional facility um, and not be afraid to ask for assistance um, from other uh, levels of government who collect far more revenue than we do, noting of course um, uh, that we have uh, less than 30,000 residents in the City of Adelaide. The City of Prospect is larger than us, the City of Charles Sturt is larger than us. Other large local government areas use our aquatic centre and we want to welcome in them into the City of Adelaide with open arms, um, uh, but we can't necessarily afford to do that with open wallets as well. Um, and so I'm very happy to support this motion because well, I'm supportive of myself as well. Um, uh, but I would say that this was always the intent. It was always my intent. Um, and I'd highlight that originally I would have preferred to go once the consultation was completed, not on the AFC, because the AFC with regards to this is, is largely relevant, but on the needs analysis. And the beauty of how um, uh, Council and Councillor Kouros, again, her motion on going to consultation on both of those items separately. The beauty of how it's put together is regardless of what we do with the AFC, we will have a significant amount of feedback on the independent needs analysis, that report on the aquatic centre generally. Um, uh, we, we can take that feedback and go and lobby other members of government, either alongside an AFC proposal or separate entirely to it. Um, uh, and that's the exciting thing about how this has been constructed. Um, of course, I would impress upon, uh, if possible, considering uh, that the needs analysis is going to be concluded, the consultation will be on the 11th of March. I would prefer to hold off. I'll leave that to administration's interpretation of this. I think it would be far more valuable to request funding or, or to highlight our plight, I suppose, um, if we can go to them and say, look, there's a significant amount of community interest here. The four options that uh, were detailed in the needs analysis, um, this is what uh, this is what the public are leaning towards, this is what the council are leaning towards, um, and then continue on from there and say, we wish to have X option or Y option um, in our funding. I think that's a lot more useful um, for premiers and prime ministers and other councils to have an idea of what they might be committing to. Nevertheless, um, I commend this motion and I thank Councillor Martin for bringing it. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. Uh, yes, I just want to reassure um, Councillor Ho that the roof is brand new. Um, we got that in one of the terrible previous councils that you refer to, that the Deputy Lord Mayor refers to. That is brand new. Um, the pools were built some time ago as an open air pool. Um, I'm not quite sure where the $500,000 came that Tom's talking about. We had an indenture arrangement with the state government, the federal government built it. Uh, we were supposed to run it. We had an indenture agreement with the state government that, and, and nobody hears that was there. The administration forgot to get it re-signed and the government then said, well, nick off, you know, we're not, we're not gonna sign it late, you're on your own. So we were on our own then. Uh, now this motion um, from uh, Councillor Martin uncovers a very interesting trend that I'm starting to notice that um, through, word of a better term, the non-independent faction is backing out of the room at a great rate. I can see that now. This is what we wanted before to go to the state government, to go to other councils. We said that. And you, you hid behind, some people hid behind this, um, what is it, the, the process. We can't change the process because we can change the process. We made up the process. Um, unsolicited bid process. And I can hear the rhetoric here, as for 25 years I've heard this rhetoric many times, and I identify this rhetoric as Team Adelaide getting very, very scared of the Victorian commercial team, commercial business taking over the parklands. They know what the consultation would bring, they know what the public meetings would bring, and they are very scared. They are 
getting out, backing out Thank of that Thank you, Councillor Moran, for talking to the motion, whether you want us to write to the, the Premier, the Prime Minister the and the neighbouring councils. So, we thank you, Councillor Moran. So, I commend this motion to you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I really appreciate it if we didn't interrupt. I commend <laughs> this motion to you. I've got the laughing jackals over here, so I don't really need you, my friend, to do the same thing. Um, I commend this motion. It sets what we should have done in the first place. The answer will be, sadly, no from all those levels of government. Um, but this is a way of making sure you don't really love the crows as much as you used to. Oh, <laughs> oh you do, do you? Thank you, Councillor Moran. Deputy Lord Mayor, you had a question? Yeah, I just had a question. Councillor Moran claimed the roof was brand new. Is When was that roof put on? Like, uh, in the second term of Peter. Yeah, Through you, Lord Mayor. Um, Tom has provided you with a detailed report of the history of the centre with all the information about the various components. But Tom, can you answer that particular question? Through you, Lord Mayor. Uh, it was the, pre not the previous council, but the council before that, that actually put, put the roof on. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm here in 1985. It's 1985? Through you, Lord Mayor. Through you, Lord Mayor, we, we spent a considerable amount of time, energy, design and cost on the roof and it actually went up, I think, around about 2010 from memory. Right. But again, I, I, I'm I think I'm close. I'm looking behind behind you, Councillor. But we'll provide no, that in no, report. I was just, con no, I was just we'll concerned you were saying something that was from 1985 was brand new. Thank you. Um, members, if there's no one else would like to speak, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Councillor Martin. Uh, yeah, look, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, everybody's jumping way ahead of me here. I, I'm proposing that we simply write in the first instance and find out whether there is something available, whether there is a program, um, and it becomes then the, the opening dialogue, not the concluding dialogue, mm -hmm. and that may or may not fit in with what's in train or not. Um, so, um, I, I'd urge members just to recognise that this is an inquiry, a letter that will go to people who may be interested in becoming um, a, a part of the financial arrangements of the centre. And it is not about the operating costs. The motion talks about upgrading, so that then is a capital contribution that we're looking for. Having said that, um, Lord Mayor, I, I just haven't felt so much love as I felt tonight for quite some years. Absolute love in tonight. Yeah, yeah. You're getting out. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm still feeling it, and look, you know, to get any kind of love is good. So, um, <laughs> I, uh, well, almost anyway. Um, I, uh, I thank, uh, I thank my uh, my colleagues um, for supporting this. It, it is uh, um, heartening for me to know that uh, you're on board with this uh, this letter writing from the Lord Mayor. I thank you very much. <laughs> Members, to the vote. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Division. Oh, we've been doing it all night. <laughs> A division has been called on the motion as we read. Please rise until the division is called and all names read. Councillor Martin, Councillor Amber Emsday, Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kira, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Cross, Councillor Brown. Thank you, members. That takes us to item number 16, motions without motions. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I wish to uh, move that council request that the CEO release any legal advice obtained relating to the revised council meeting structure. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Seconding. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, the purpose of um, this motion uh, tonight is pretty straightforward, Lord Mayor. Um, there's been some uh, public discussion about the changes that uh, Council has made to its meeting structure. Um, you uh, have uh, referenced the legal advice in a, a media article um, over the weekend. And uh, I think given the public interest in this, um, the community has a right to know what is contained within that advice. 
um, and uh, this would then uh, enable the community to proceed with confidence in terms of understanding how the council is going to work um, from now on. It would also um, allow councillors to talk openly about what is contained within the advice and to uh, express their own interpretations um, in relation to any advice received. So I think this is a motion that is in the public interest and um, it provides an opportunity to inform the public and um, it's something I think all councillors should uh, get behind. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Did you wish to speak? Members? I'm sorry, Councillor Abbey. I had a question. If I may, Lord um, uh, With this, I guess, what would be the risk here for us as a council and um, subsequently to our ratepayers? Thanks, Rudy. Could you come as well? Through the Lord Mayor, um, the council has a practice of not disclosing uh, legal advice, indeed not to um, waive legal professional privilege. If it were to do so, of course, you can't preempt any future uh, legal challenges, but you won't be able to rely on that legal uh, professional privilege because council has waived that. So it's hard to preempt any future actions. Um, it might be fair to say that um, the advice was of a more general nature, so the risk is probably on the lower scale compared to, for, for example, legal advice provided on a, a litigation case or a legal challenge or a complaint. Uh, here it's uh, an application of on the um, local government act, so the advice is more of a general nature, so the risk is probably rather low. Um, I do need to point out, though, that, of course, um, it's not just legal professional privilege that's at play. There's also intellectual property uh, protection for the law firm who owns the legal advice. Uh, that was provided to the council. So uh, I would suggest that we seek the permission from the legal providers, the external legal providers, to do indeed share uh, the advice to the wider public. Uh, because the legal providers have done so to give that to the council, not necessarily for that advice to be published, which is a different level altogether. So that might be uh, a subject to for consideration. Councillor Moran. Lord Mayor, can I have a suggestion that I'd like to give to the mover of this motion as the seconder, that he includes the phrase after legal advice with the permission of the legal firm. Yes, I'm Thank happy you, to agree to that, Lord Mayor. Mm -hmm. And just to make it clear, I'm referring to publicly release. It might be good to add that in too. The CEO publicly release anything. Members, would anybody else like to speak to this motion? Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, I actually have no issue releasing the advice um, with, the, with the permission of the legal firm. Um, although even without their permission, I have little issue because all they're going to do is get upset that they can't charge other councils for the same advice. I'm, I'm assuming, I don't think there's anything, uh, we've all read it, I don't think there's anything particularly um, uh, sticking in there. But it is an important transparency matter and it's one um, that I'm glad, uh, Lord Mayor, um, with your leadership, we were able to clarify because it's an important matter um, uh, for the committee uh, that I chair and I, um, when uh, joining other councillors and supporting that committee structure was very much supportive of um, having a committee that uh, that is able to debate the issues. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that's where we've again landed. Um, I, am, I am somewhat concerned that we're considering this as a motion without notice and that um, at least I haven't seen it circulated beforehand. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to read any significant administrative comment on the matter. Um, and so in waiving, in waiving such privileges, and, um, and that's as well the fast nature of it is evidenced by the fact that we're seeking permission as well. Um, uh, that makes me somewhat uncomfortable and I hope it's not common practice um, for this council to be considering many motions without notice that might have implications that waive our privileges um, uh, or other such things. Um, uh, but in, in concluding, I would say that um, I've had people that are not councillors and were not included on that email chain quote this legal advice back to me. So it seems to me that this has already managed to be circulated somewhat 
in, uh, in public areas or to people, or persons who otherwise wouldn't have had it. Um, and I wonder uh, if, uh, if that's the motivation is to, is to go back and rectify an inadvertent leak or some, some, something of that nature, I'm not suggesting that that's what's happened, but I hope it isn't. Um, but it is concerning that it already appears to be out there. Um, and so I guess given that um, uh, and being comfortable with the idea in itself, I'm happy to I'm happy to support this motion if it will aid in the in the transparency measures that we've undertaken in this council. Um, uh, and uh, I commend uh, the motion to the chamber. Uh, Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Uh, well, look, just to say, um, now the uh, the new leader of Team Adelaide has spoken. We don't really need to bother to talk you into it. Uh, I think it's polite to ask the permission of the legal team. Motions without notice are a, are a right of every council. This does not involve money, so it is completely um, legitimate uh, to move as motion without notice. To cast shadow of doubt on motion without notice is ridiculous. Um, the legal advice is confusing. Uh, it seems to uh, the the implication that somebody is covering their ass by doing this is offensive in the extreme. Uh, but I guess that's what uh, Councillor Hyde meant it to be. Um, I think that um, I haven't read the legal advice, but I have read the Lord Mayor's um, explanation of it, and I'm still confused. It's a bit like the gag order. You can talk on Monday, Tuesdays and Fridays, but you can't talk on the other day, so it's not a gag. Um, this says that we can discuss everything, but we're not to give our opinion, and we're not to, not to say, to even intimate how we, might, how we feel about the discussion, i.e., for instance, how we might vote on it. So it seems like, yeah, we can discuss everything like the weather, but we can't actually discuss in full what's on the agenda. So I will read the legal advice now. Obviously, Councillor Hart as the chairman of that meeting had had legal advice or governance advice, and he ran the meeting as I thought the legal advice um, in speaking to a real lawyer um, Councillor Sims suggested, so I thought he did quite well. So I, I think that I would like the legal advice to be released so I can speak to lawyers um, and ask them to tell me what it really means, because I think it I think it sounded like it meant exactly as Councillor Hyde interpreted it. Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, while I appreciate um, Councillor Sims bringing this forward, um, and has the ability to bring it out in without notice. I'm a little bit uncomfortable with that knowing the uh, consequences um, and really having um, some firm explanation from um, um, administration in regards to any consequences that may come from this. Um, so it's I would I won't be voting for this tonight, um, but um, only because um, I just don't think it's the right way to forward in regards not knowing what the consequences, consequences this may have an effect to the council. Members, if not, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor, you had a question? Sorry, just a, a point of clarification from Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran, did you say you haven't read the advice yet? I have seen the advice, but no, I haven't. I relied on a lawyer explaining to me what the advice is. Okay, understood. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor, sorry, I've asked the COs just, yes you can, thank you. Three, Lord Mayor, I just wanted to clarify with you with our standing orders, the, the matter that fact, the fact that deals with motions so that we're all clear on it. Um, um, so section 227, that council members may bring forward any business during a council meeting in the form of a motion on notice or a motion without notice. Motions on notice are submitted via the Council Liaison Officer. 228 states that noting Regulation 12.6 below, motions without notice should be limited to matters that are, that are time sensitive, would not require input from the administration to inform the decision making process or the exp expenditure of funds. That is the actual 
requirement for motions without notice. If this isn't time sensitive, Councillor Sims, did you want to put it on notice? I think it is time sensitive, Lord Mayor, and I'm happy to explain why. In your summing up? Yeah. Did you have well, another question? No, I'd just Definitely. like to raise a point of order then. I think this is out of line with the standing orders, and I think the fact that some councillors haven't read them or at least in detail just goes to show that um, yeah. we need to consider this properly. Um, it, be that as it may, I did accept the motion. So in this instance, I will accept the motion and I will ask councillors. Can I challenge that? Um, no, I'm sorry, you can't. So, um, and we do actually understand if there's any cost implications, time sensitivity, urgency, etc. So I did actually accept it, uh, not having seen it earlier. Um, but I will actually implore the members in the chamber to please be mindful about that with any further motions without notice. Councillor Sims, I'll ask you to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And look, um, obviously, uh, Council, <coughs> pardon me, form a view on whether or not they want to consider this tonight. Um, my personal view is this is urgent because it has been a subject of conjecture within the media. Um, I want to address the comment that Councillor Hyde seemed to imply that my motivation in raising this issue was that the advice had been referred on. I want to make it very clear I have never referred confidential advice sent to this council to any external party, nor would I ever do so, and I have not done so in this instance. My motivation for wanting to um, get this information into the public realm was I was asked a question by a journalist relating to legal advice, um, and I was not in a position to provide a comment because I understood the advice to be confidential. Um, and I saw your comments, Lord Mayor, which were of a general nature, but I felt that I could not uh, comment on the matter because I did not want to be seen to be breaching um, legal professional privilege. Um, so it's in that basis that I wanted to bring the uh, matter to council tonight and to um, be very transparent, I sought advice from administration around how best to do that um, in hope that if a council agreed to make the legal advice publicly available, um, that that would allow me to speak openly to members of the community um, about this. So my intention in bringing the matter forward was actually to do the right thing in terms of complying with um, council's confidentiality um, measures. So I just want to make that very clear um, from the outset. So that's my rationale for putting this forward. In terms of precedent around legal advice, um, we uh, did have uh, this debate when we were dealing with the controversy around the, the gag um, order. Council did agree to release its legal advice at that time, and that was publicly available um, and extensively reported within the media. And given there has been a significant amount of public interest in this, I think putting it out there into the community so that everybody has access to it um, is an appropriate way to deal with the issue. Thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? That is lost. Division. Division has been called. Those members voting in favour of the motion as varied, please rise. Councillor Martin, Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims. Declared against. Uh, members, that takes us to, uh, well, we're still on motions without notice, sorry. Um, Councillor Martin. Um, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. I did ask um, earlier on, uh, that's it, to get, um, if I could lodge this, um, this motion and provided the administration uh, doesn't believe that it's going to incur cost or that it's not appropriate, but it. Uh... Well, it's actually my decision, and I actually think that I'll accept this motion. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Good, good, good. Um, okay, thank you. I'll look for a seconder. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Oh, pleased to see that uh, it's. Yes, you're all... working as a team tonight. It's great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what do we call it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Councillor Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I actually stumped for words for a moment. Councillor Martin, uh, someone yeah. like you. Um, look, uh, I want to, oh, and by the way, Lord Mayor, congratulations too on uh, uh, being listed in the News Limited Most Influential People list. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing all of us on that list, <laughs> although it doesn't. 
Um, and I mentioned News Limited also because I, I do want to congratulate uh, Craig Cook from News Limited, who deserves uh, our thanks for that phone call to Councillor Aviat, um, so that we could have this announcement that he's uh, he's now left us and is in Saudi Arabia. But back to him, uh, and I say that the uh, the city of Adelaide's loss is Saudi Arabia's gain. Um, I uh, didn't always um, agree with the son. In fact, I can't ever remember agreeing with him on anything. But nevertheless, he was a, a, a formidable opponent here in this uh, this council. Um, and uh, I, I recall um, the uh, particular passion with which he argued for uh, some projects. Um, and although it predates me, Victoria Square, although, as you know, he's a fierce advocate, for um, Victoria Square 2, um, which is a, a, a bit like uh, The Exorcist 2, I suppose, in terms of the nightmare that that turned out to be for council. And of course, um, uh, Gawler Place, which was also one of his proudest achievements. And I put the council on notice that at some stage, I think we should move that it be called Assam Abiyad Close or Avenue or something, um, because it was uh, his primary um, uh, objective. But his, uh, his proudest achievement, I think, Lord Mayor, was getting you elected. Um, he was excited. I, I beg your pardon. I'm very sorry, Councillor Martin. I don't think Hassan got me elected. Oh, well, he, he believes that he got I think the ratepayers of Adelaide voted. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Deputy Lord Mayor. <laughs> I didn't hear that. Can you repeat that? No, thank you. We are talking to the motion before us. Continue um, with your congratulations. That would be lovely. Yes. Um, I've lost uh, um, my place mentally. Um, uh, but also, um, of course, for uh, creating um, the team that we have here in Council. And Lord Mayor, I know that for a year you corrected me and said there wasn't a team. And I do understand your confusion because Hassan said initially there isn't a team, then he said there is a team, then he said there isn't a team. And then finally, when he left us a few weeks ago, uh, just before leaving, he said there is a team. And I invented it. And he invented it, yeah. And uh, t to the extent that um, the team is still here, I guess that uh, is his legacy, um, that there are people, like-minded people, that uh, he, um, he had joined him here in this chamber. May I have just a half a minute more? Members? I'm, I'm not going to say anything bad about it. Well, not for me. Anyway. So, I, 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 it was the strangest congratulations I've ever heard. But please continue for 30 seconds, Councillor. Uh, um, and uh, uh, Lord Mayor, I just wanted to uh, conclude by saying that uh, I, I do wish him well. Um, he, he was, as I said earlier, a formidable opponent. And uh, my view is that the council chamber uh, will miss um, his influence. Um, uh, but uh, I, I trust that uh, his career move turns out to be a good move and that the future for he and uh, his, uh, his wife are good. Thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I suppose in, in starting, I might just outline when I first met Hussam Aviad. We're actually having lunch at uh, Pranzo's just around the corner. Um, and uh, he actually he actually took me out to meet him for the first time and he was lobbying for my vote for the uh, Adelaide, federal Adelaide pre-selection um, for the Liberal Party. And that's the first time I met him. And that was actually against the advice um, of people around me, uh, I would say more conservative people, um, uh, who didn't, uh, didn't share many of Hussam's political views and what have you. Um, needless to say, we did meet. Um, and uh, we hit it off immediately, both in, in an ideological and in a pragmatic sense, um, uh, and found out that we actually had uh, a lot of things in common. And one of the things that we held uh, dearest and most in common um, was the firm belief that us as a state of South Australia and as a city, the city of Adelaide, uh, could do much better um, than, than what we were currently doing. The, the idea that we could be more and the idea that we should be more and we should always be striving um, uh, to be more than we are. Indeed, that's the spirit uh, in which South Australia uh, was proclaimed in 1836 and that's the, the spirit that this 
democracy, the oldest democracy in the country, um, uh, was founded, that entrepreneurial spirit, uh, free, settled and striving to be the best that we can be. And that is something that I think uh, Councillor Aviard uh, embodied uh, and lived up to every day. He's, uh, uh, he was a magnificent, or is and remains to be in some respects, a magnificent mentor, um, a very good friend uh, and a genuine and decent person. Um, uh, and I would just say that in, in helping the city of Adelaide to, to be its best self, um, uh, Councillor Aviad undertook um, a number of projects. He twice served as Deputy Lord Mayor for two Lord Mayors. He was the first Muslim Deputy Lord Mayor in Australia, and it goes to show you how inclusive we are as a society. Um, uh, the Rondon Mall redevelopment, as highlighted, was uh, one of his ideas, well, one of the projects rather that he pushed very significantly and helped get over the line. Um, uh, 10 Gig Adelaide. Um, which is uh, one of the things that saw us win that award just overnight as one of the most or one of the smartest cities in the world. Um, a digitising council, of course, and I'm reminded of things like the live stream, which we've now expanded upon and live streaming to Facebook um, so that all those people can watch us at home and to keep our democracy accessible. Um, I, I know he was also an advocate for um, uh, remote voting and other things that he unfortunately hasn't uh, been able to see through to the end. But um, uh, I think that speaks to, uh, to, to his, his desire to see council be the best and that technology, um, we should always be using the best we can when it comes to technology. Uh, Park Adelaide, I know he did a lot of work on that app um, and to help that come to fruition. Um, some other achievements include wiping outdoor dining fees, not once, but twice once they sne uh, sneaked back in and he had to get rid of them again. And I think more permanently, I'll just ask for another minute and a half. Um, uh, the Victoria Square redevelopment, uh, by virtue of the work that he did uh, on Rundle Mall, where the council was actually able to fund two large projects in that time, and Victoria Square was the other one. Um, uh, in addition to that, the master plan for Heinley Street was something he was incredibly passionate about. Um, he uh, started out in the East End with a business and was really, really interested in completing the public realm all the way from East Terrace through Rundle Street, Rundle Mall and Heinley Street and also Heinley Street West. Uh, I know he's very passionate about us finishing off that last quarter um, there. In addition, the uh, Chinatown redevelopment, which we've now announced with the state government, I know he was uh, very keen on and passionate about, uh, freezing the rate on the dollar, um, which was something that he pushed for all throughout uh, his time in council and continued to this year as well. Um, improvements to the Frome Street bikeway and essentially rescuing that project, um, as well as moving motions to undertake greening in the central ward and the southwest of the city. Uh, cutting red tape, and uh, he also remains an advocate for abolishing the Rundle Mall levy. All of these things stand testament to Councillor Abia and his commitment to the City of Adelaide, its ratepayers, and its broader community over the last 10 years. And we wish him all the very best. Thank you, Councillor Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, Councillor Kouros. Um. I welcome this motion uh, and uh, I am very surprised um, that it was brought forward by Councillor Martin. Um, the comments that he has made in the chamber and to the media about uh, Hassan Abiyad, um, it doesn't match to uh, what he's bringing forward today, but nevertheless, I welcome it. Um, I do uh, want to list the board of appointments, uh, well, his contribution that um, Hassan has made. So he was the I have to had to make a list because there were so many. Uh, so he was a board member of the Capital City Adelaide Central Market, Rundle Mall, East End Coordination Group, Australian Refugee Association, Engineers Without Borders, Migrant Resource Centres, Australian Arab Chamber of Commerce. He was a chairperson for the Australia Day Council, Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, and United for Peace. He was a very dedicated councillor. Um, he served twice as a deputy Lord Mayor. Um, he is a uh, very dedicated to the city, has got complete passion for the city. Um, and we, uh, I am in awe of um, his uh, level of uh, work ethic and passion that he gives um, to the Adelaide City Council. Um, he he's, he's very, very passionate with community work um, multi, and multiculturalism. Multi um, he's a very astute entrepreneur um, and, uh, and his com community participation has been um, very effective in being able to bring communities together. 
He was awarded the Pride Medal, uh, Australia, uh, Pride of Australia Medal, and through his service to the community, he has worked with the SA Police, Multicultural SA, the Human Rights, Equal Opportunity Commission, Festival of Ideas, Relationship SA, and the Department of Immigration. Hassan has always given the time to help uh, people and try and solve as many issues as he can. He's always been respectful, he's always been compassionate, and, uh, and as I've said, there's one thing he certainly does love is this city. Of course, with a person with uh, this much um, attributes and work ethic, and ethic that he has and as much intelligence as he has, it does not surprise me um, that he was offered the opportunity that he has and I wish him the best. Um, it's no secret that Hassam and I have been uh, friends for over 10 years now. Uh, when I uh, first met him, he uh, just uh, been appointed on the Adelaide City Council. Um, and uh, I uh, approached him two weeks before the nominations to um, tell him that I'm thinking of uh, running for council. Um, he, um, as always, um, he opens up his arms and he, um, he understood um, the fears that I had in wanting to run for council. I've never campaigned before, um, but through it all, he supported me and just like he does with the community, he gives his all and um, he will be missed on council, but I'm so lucky to have him as a friend. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Councillor Sims. Thanks, um, Lord Mayor. And look, I want to uh, join in congratulating uh, Councillor Abbiot on his service to the City of Adelaide. Um, you know, it, it might surprise uh, members because I know um, Hassam and I sometimes had a few clashes um, here in the chamber, but um, I did actually enjoy um, his company. Um, and um, Hassam and I met back in 2014 when I was first running for council. We uh, connected during that campaign, had lots of discussions during that election campaign. We went our own separate ways in terms of um, the campaigns uh, we ran. But when um, I got elected to uh, council, um, I very much enjoyed working with Hassan. And I must say, we often came at issues from different perspectives. But what I really valued um, about the relationship at that time was that we were able to sometimes reach consensus um, here in the council chamber. He would often be uh, at one side of an issue, I would be on the other, um, and we would often be able to meet in the middle and um, find a good uh, consensus. And um, I think that is a very important um, culture for us to try and cultivate within this council going forward. Um, and uh, I hope that um, we can uh, do so. Um, I will say uh, also, I saw there's been some um, negative comments about uh, the by-election that's coming down the line and some unfair um, media commentary around that. Um, as someone who created a by-election myself, I have some empathy for um, Sam in that regard because, you know, life happens, opportunities come up and um, I think uh, people have to have the space to be able to take those. Um, so, you know, I think some of the media commentary around Hassan uh, has been unfair um, and um, those uh, criticising him for um, taking uh, this opportunity in terms of creating a by-election need to reflect on uh, what is standard practice within any other form of employment. Um, so look, I, I do wish Hassan well, despite our um, differences we've had over the years, I do hope that um, people reflect on the uh, collegiate approach that was taken back on the previous council when we worked together. I hope that we can bring that into um, this council or improve our culture somewhat um, going forward. But I wish Assam all the best um, and uh, also um, his wife Ava on this next chapter, which I'm sure will be an exciting and challenging role for him. I have Councillor Kerrin and then Councillor Abrams. Thanks, uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. I do join uh, the chorus of uh, congratulations for Councillor uh, Abia Kassam uh, in his new role. Um, it's uh, well, it's only been a year that I served with uh, with Hassan on council, and uh, it's, uh, it took me by surprise, and I and I do regret uh, taking the sum something for the summer for granted uh, and not catching up with 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 Councillor Abia uh, more often in that time. Um, uh, it, uh, Councillor Abia, just just one anecdote, uh, just 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 one anecdote, Lord Mayor. Um, when I decided to run for the election um, 
uh, for this term. Uh, I've met Councillor Abiad once very briefly. Um, and uh, despite the fact that uh, we, we had no real interaction, we didn't know each other, we, uh, and I was in no way any kind of political affiliate, um, I had made uh, an elementary mistake with my call flutes. Now, I was in direct competition with Councillor Abbey at the Central Ward, uh, and yet Councillor Abbey was the first person to ring me early uh, the next morning after my call flutes went up to tell me, Jesse, uh, you've, got a, you've got a problem with your call flutes, they're, they're potentially a breach of the Electoral Act. And he was right. Uh, and it allowed me to, I, I raced around with stickers and, uh, and fixed up the problem. Now that is, uh, that is uh, a great measure of, of the man, uh, uh, Lordly. That is a great, great uh, measure of the man. Um, I found Councillor Abiad personally to be um, uh, always open, uh, always ready to speak, always ready to, uh, to advise. Uh, I found him uh, a rare combination of, of, a, of a details a uh, details guy and a big picture guy, uh, as well as, a bit, as being politically savvy. Um, he was headhunted, he was poached, make no mistake, it is a loss to the city. Um, but I think that uh, uh, Councillor Abiad um, will, will be a terrific representative for Adelaide uh, should that, for the region, uh, should that opportunity arise. Um, and, uh, uh, um, you know, it is without question, no one would in this chamber would dispute how absolutely diligent and hardworking Councillor Abiyat was, and uh, it is to his credit that the differences that um, are there with him are political. Uh, and uh, he he undertook um, a role despite some some really quite torrid and I think undeserved political flack. Um, but but uh, he um, I think he undertook uh, his, uh, the, the, his his serving on council uh, with dignity. And uh, I wholeheartedly congratulate him. Thank you, Councillor Kira. Councillor Abraham is there. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I thank Councillor Martin for bringing this to the chamber. And uh, uh, I believe it was um, because of Councillor uh, Abiyad's uh, influence and assistance that Councillor Martin first got elected in, into the chamber in, in, uh, in 2014. So uh, it's, it's very nice of you to. Uh, uh, to bring this this motion uh, to the chamber, and and I would like to also um, go back to what you said, Councillor Martin, about having a worthy opinion, uh, an opponent. Sorry, having a worthy opponent. Right, but... <laughs> well, sure, if you say so. L Lord Mayor, uh, you and maybe some other, some of the other members might know that uh, I had a uh, uh, a, a very uh, short career being a semi elite uh, athlete, and uh, I. I do understand what a worthy opponent looks like, and, I'm, um, and I uh, wholeheartedly agree with you. You have to give credit where credit is due, and I know that uh, Councillor Abiyad uh, uh, had, uh, had a number of opponents in this, uh, in this chamber, and I guess that's what democracy is all about, uh, but uh, it, is, uh, it is true that um, uh, he was a worthy opponent if uh, uh, you didn't necessarily uh, agree with what he was saying. Um, I first met uh, Councillor Abia through the Australia Day Council. He was the Deputy Chair uh, of the Australia Day Council at the time. Uh, the year was 2016 and I had just had the privilege of um, being named the 2016 Young Australian of the Year for South Australia. Um, so I got to know him through uh, that council for a number of years until, uh, uh, until I moved into the city and uh, I remember catching up with Councillor Abiyad uh, one day and um, I started, uh, I started unloading everything that, uh, that I thought was, uh, not necessarily was wrong, but everything that could be improved about our city. So uh, he stopped in my tracks and he said, you know what, stop complaining, put your money where your mouth is, and if you think that uh, you have ideas and you have projects and initiatives uh, that the ratepayers will, uh, uh, will like and relate to, then have a crack at, uh, at council. And that's, uh, that's eventually how I, um, um, how I yeah, came into this place. So again, going back to what uh, uh, Councillor Martin was saying, and, and with this motion, I do uh, commend this motion to the Chamber, and I uh, would like to wish Councillor Abia uh, and his family all the very best there with his future endeavours. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Abraham. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And actually, I'd like to thank Councillor Martin for bringing this motion 
to the chamber tonight. Indeed, like, when I first looked at this, I was, I was looking on my phone and trying to search the photo I took when Councillor Martin and Councillor Abbey had a big hut right here in the middle <laughs> in our first council meeting in this term. Well, not like some of the members, I actually don't know Hosan well enough, but I must say it, it was, I mean, it was very difficult to try to take primary role from Hussam, even in China. <laughs> he was well respected by the local Chinese community. And indeed, that gave me a lot of encouragement that if you are really doing a good job for your people, they will acknowledge that and they will they will remember you. So I would say, yeah, I mean, to him is a challenge. I mean, is a is a well, it's a big challenge in his next journey and it's a loss to our city and it's a loss to the council, I would say, but, you know, life, life will move on. That's all I'd like to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Now, And uh, I won't say too much because my voice is going, but uh, I think, uh, <laughs> uh, as with all the other members, yes, he, he has been amazing. And I have the greatest admiration for his ability and, and uh, you know, how he's been able to juggle uh, you know, all of the attributes that make him such a well-rounded person. And, and let us not forget uh, the desire to uh, make a council and enable a council to be as effective as possible and his openness and, his, and assistance to, to all and sundry. Uh, you know, has certainly been a, a, a you know a wonderful uh, addition to you know the ability for this council to perform. Uh, we are all individuals, despite some of the wordings, but uh, we we come together with a joint purpose, and I think he was able he, he engendered that, and all the conversations that we've had he engendered that because it is about what we want to deliver, what we think we need to do, and how we can work together to achieve those those goals. But you can do that for the betterment of all, and I think. Um, he, he enabled that uh, and also encouraged everybody uh, who wished to take an opportunity, to wish to do things, to do exactly that and, and attempted to be as inclusive as possible. So, I, I mean, I cannot, uh, I wish him, of course, the very best. And he will achieve great things because he is capable of doing those things. Thank you. Councillor Moran. Uh, I don't share a lot of the views in this room. Uh, <laughs> I felt that Assam was hardworking and I've known him probably the longest on council. He was very hardworking, but I think he lacked a basic understanding of what democracy meant. And I wish him and Ava a long, long, happy stay in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Councillor Martin to sum up. Uh, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, Councillor Abrahimzadeh is right. Um, uh, uh, Councillor Abiyad Hassan uh, was supportive when I first stood for council, and I got uh, about 300 votes. And then the second time round, he was a staunch opponent, and I was able to double the vote. So I'm, I'm grateful to him on both counts. <laughs> But look, uh, politics is politics. I, uh, I tabled uh, this motion without notice uh, because no one else had. And I've always taken the view that uh, if you uh, take a role in public life, then it needs to be acknowledged, uh, whatever the personal opinion is. And I thank all the members for their comments tonight. I am absolutely certain that Assam somewhere in Saudi Arabia is watching this tonight um, and enjoying it. And uh, um, I wish him all the best. Thank you, members, to the vote. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, members, we are still on motions without notice. <coughs> yes, Councillor Martin. Um, just the motion that I flagged, and look, I'll uh, have the, um, the good sense not to propose to debate this. All this does. Um, Councillor, I'm, I'm actually not going to accept this one. And Why is for that? all of the discussions that we had earlier about it does have cost implications, it's not time sensitive given that the consultation period has now been extended. Um, so I would ask that this put on notice for the next meeting. What are the cost implications for me? Legal opinion. Um, I haven't said that we would incur costs. We have internal uh, legal advice. So <laughs> I'm actually going to ask for this to be put on notice, Councillor Martin, but for it, the reasons that we talked about earlier. Um, which are the other reasons? Because the cost is not one. Um, you say it's not time sensitive. 
we are, you are actually requesting a legal opinion, which has cost implications. Um, the time sensitivity is not urgent because we've extended the consultation period. So if we put it on notice, that will give um, everybody enough time and um, admin enough time to respond to that as well. Um, uh, will the Lord Mayor, I beg to differ. If um, it is, uh, may, may I just um, uh, object um, and well, put you, the reasons why? You can object, but I've actually said I'm not accepting this motion without notice. So I'm asking that it's put on notice for the next meeting. Okay, Lord Mayor, I, I understand you're making that judgment. So if I'm asking in the March meeting, you, you remember we only meet once a month yes, now. I do. Yes. If we're meeting in the March meeting and I'm asking the administration in the March meeting to go away and come back with a legal opinion, which may be an internal legal opinion, we will have that advice in April, after which the consultation is long gone and at that meeting there may well be a proposal for us to consider. So you're asking me to believe that postponing this tonight is um, is somehow going to satisfy the need for the advice when it'll come after the event? Because that actually has to come back into APRA and APRA won't be looking at anything until after. Through you, Lord Mayor, I understand the, the desire to have legal opinion. My belief is that that legal opinion could be obtained before council will make any consideration of the outcome of the community engagement all the way forward. So I don't see it being a time sensitive issue at this time. Okay, well, I'll accept your advice that nothing will come to us till May. No, through you, Lord Mayor, I didn't say that. I didn't say nothing will come to you before May. But Thank you. Um, that takes us to item number 17, which is exclusion of the public. Um, there are seven items uh, presented for request for consideration in confidence. Each item, of course, requires a motion and decision to order the exclusion of the public to enable consideration. Councillors, if I could have a mover and a seconder for 18.1.1. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Seconded, Councillor Canole. Members to the vote, those... No, 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 I can have my hand in the You air. had your hand in the air, Councillor Martin. Uh, look, I would ask members to vote against this. Um, Lord Mayor, this um, is a matter oh, sorry, that relates to activity on the parklands. Um, it has no commercial interest whatever. Uh, all there is, I suspect, is uh, a view that because another party, which always seeks confidentiality, um, uh, that is the reason. But at this time, as you know, Lord Mayor, there is just overwhelming public distrust of this council because every time there's a matter about the parklands, we go into confidence. Um, and, and I need not remind you that there was the Adelaide Hotel, Adelaide Oval Hotel. We had that in confidence for ages. In fact, it's still in confidence, much of that. Um, there's now a new a stadium that's talked about on the, uh, the parklands and the rail yards, or perhaps um, somewhere else on the golf links. N now there's this new proposal for something else on the parklands. And here we are again saying, let's not tell anyone. Let's keep it secret. Now, this is the secrecy that you all talk about trying to avoid. We talk about trying to be transparent, and here is a development, a, uh, a matter that ought to be um, in the public realm. And moreover, uh, I am aware that this matter at APLA was the subject of some contention with people also expressing views not dissimilar to this one. So I just ask members, vote against keeping this secret, vote for it to be heard in the public realm. Thank you. Members, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I also want to speak against this being uh, held in confidence. Um, I think there's a very important principle um, when we're talking about public land, and that is when we're talking about public land, the community has a right to be informed. Um, and um, I'm concerned about a, a confidentiality order um, being applied in this instance. And I, I understand, um, members, um, it's been a long night, but I would encourage people when they're considering these uh, confidentiality matters to um, adopt a case-by-case -case approach. 
Um, and I think that this is one of those circumstances where um, to cloak this in secrecy would not be appropriate. Um, so I urge members to vote against this. Are there any other speakers? If not, I'll go to the mover to someone. Sumber. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, Councillors, I need a mover and seconder for item 18.1.2, which is the advice of the Audit Committee. Councillor Abrahamsaday, seconder. Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? If not, I'll go back to the mover. No. No. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, I need a mover and seconder for 18.2.1, which is the 2019-2020 quarter to commercial operations report. Councillor Abraham today, seconded Councillor Canal. Members, wish anybody wish to speak to the motion? <coughs> if not, to the vote to sum up. Members, those in favour, those against, that is carried. 18.2.2, um, which is the 2019-20 uh, Planning and Development Fund projects. Thank you, Councillor Abraham, today, Executive Councillor Canole. Members, if not, to the move to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. 18.2.3, uh, Partnership Proposals 2019-2020, Councillor Abraham, today, Councillor Canole, seconder, members. If not, back to the move to sum up. To the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. 18.2.4, Capital City Committee update. Council Abraham today, second to Council Knoll. Uh, members, if not, back to the move to sum up. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. 18.2.5, the appointment of board members to uh, RMMA. Councillor Canole, <laughs> seconded by Councillor Abraham today. Members, Councillor Canole, to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, members of the gallery and staff, thank you for your attendance this evening. Um, any members of the gallery and staff not associated with items 18.1.1, and 18.2.4 and 18.2.5, um, if you could now please leave the pain chamber while the council considers the final item.
announcements. I'll just wait for the doors to be opened. Thank you, Ed. Members, I declare the meeting closed. Thank you.